2019. Final Fantasy Randomizer Spring Tournament begins now! The night of the reveal, it's late evening, the couple hours before, really, we were supposed to start on April 6th, it's April 5th. My name's Wilkleosis, I am the Smooth Talker, and I am joined by one of my idols, thank you so much, on very short notice, we'll get to that in just a moment, right here on Lord Fizzlebeef's channel, it's Nitz! Oh, thank you. And it's not just me, it's Shadowwalker227, Moist Mogwai FF, kicking off the tournament tonight. You know, the bracket reveal took place, like, mere hours ago, and then there's all this talk about if you want to restream, you gotta wait. Forget all that, we're having a restream now on Lord Fizzlebeef's channel, and we're starting this tournament right the day it starts with Friday Night Cornelian Lights. That is exactly what we're doing. We are live right now on Lord Fizzlebeef's channel. We put this together. Uh, thank you so much, Lord Fizzlebeef. He's doing the restreaming. He's behind the scenes. He's getting the tracker ready. We've got Lyra, uh, the t my darling Lyra of Team Vorp, along with Zardia. They're getting together. They're going to help us track this match and bring to the fans. It's the kickoff. We had an incredible kickoff last year, Nets. You remember that match? It was Lord Fizzlebeef himself and brilliant. We'll see if we can relive that magic again. 2019 Final Fantasy Randomizer Spring Tournament. Nets, what do you expect to see tonight? Well, the uh, first round, one of the uh, unique aspects of this tournament is both a forced character and a banned class every every round. So for round one, we've got a forced uh, white mage, banned thief. And what that means is both learners have actually opted for the rainbow party. So you've got excellent balance with fighter red, black, white, and uh, you, you have access to all the magic, all the weapons, it's a great party if, if, the, if the magic rolls well, so this could be a jet seat. This could be a, a really great race with like a lot of firepower. I don't expect it's going to be too much of a slog, because everything should be available to these runners tonight. Once again, thank you, Nitz, for joining me. These players got together. These two players, Shadowwalker227 on the right-hand side of your screen, Mama Duck herself, Moist Mogwai, a legend in the Final Fantasy Randomizer community on the left, good friends. They get along really well. And we got this match going. Here we go. White Mage is forced. And right off the beginning, Moist Mogwai is rearranging her party. And uh, let's see. Black Magic Shop, level one. Not much. That stop. Mm -hmm. That'll affect all the enemies, but it'll only paralyze them. White Magic, Cure 3 is good. X for, I don't know. Lamp, probably the most important spell there. <laughs> well, I mean, there's Cure 3, but then there's Lamp. Yes. Just in case you get you know, blinded in battle, and God help you. That's what Lamp is for. Uh, the parties are the same. They don't quite look the same. I think uh, everybody on Moist Mogwai's side threw all the laundry all in together, so the blacks and the whites, and then all of a sudden you got a bunch of pink mages and fighters running around. But uh, looks good. We'll see how, uh, how you know, the, <laughs> the pink and purple force can do tonight. Shadow Walker, as expected, is, is the first to leave Canaria. He makes a huge run off of Power Cycle. He's already in the Temple of Fiends and hasn't even gotten an encounter until that goal. He heads straight to Garland. It's got to oh, be an effect of those spells. Oh, he's got to stop. <laughs> he's got some rub. And rub. Well. Not a great spell, but it will work on the super weak Garland. It takes him down in one shot, and uh, so far so good for Lord Visibly. Shadow Walker. Shadow Walker. <laughs> Shadow Walker picks up, I believe that was the crown from the King of Canaria and the herb from Princess Sarah, if that's correct. Yeah, I think we're ahead. Well, uh, we threw this together. We're bringing you this matchup. These two <laughs> players, good friends, definitely wanted to play. We're going to work on that real quick. Thank you again to Lord Fizzleby for taking care of this. We might be a little bit ahead. Maybe we'll get behind. Whatever it is that we do, doesn't matter, because you know what? We're having fun, and we're going to have a good time here tonight. <laughs> I'll just talk slowly and think slowly. Those are two of my fortes. Moist Mogwai has taken out Garland. Double check. She's going to double check her menu. I'm going to pick up her herb and her crown as well. So she's got both of those. Looks like we're about eight seconds ahead from what it is that I can see. Yeah, the uh, Cuneria item shop, well stocked. Uh, reasonable prices all the way around. My wife picks up a whole bunch of affordable tents. 
Shadow Walker's gonna get off to the races. He's headed towards the original Provoca. Towns are shuffled. That's a staple of the 2019 Spring Tournament design. He's found Crescent Lake, Nitz. There's a key item in there. Yeah, there's a key item. Fate at level 6. It's uh, gonna be painfully out of reach for a long time. Ice 3 on the Black Mage side. And the Canoe Sage with the canoe! That's right. Shadow Walker picks up the canoe from the Canoe Sage, and then one of the- they let one of the old guys out. It looked like Edgeworth. Edgeworth is gonna try to block Shadow Walker. He's aged. He, he, he doesn't look well. Just completely lost and disoriented. Moist Mogwai is going a little bit of a different route. She's gonna head towards Matoya's cave. There's three chests in here looking for money, maybe a weapon. See what it is that she picks up. It looks like it's only a couple bucks in a pure pot. We'll see if she decides to reset, and it looks like she might just do that. Yeah, she did. She's gonna head towards the original Provoca now, just a little bit behind, as they crisscross a high five and a dosy -si do and for Shadow Walker. Homey woods, yeah. So, the canoe does certainly provide some progression. Makes it easier to get to Matoya right off the bat. I don't have to walk around. Oh! <laughs> That's commentary curse. I apologize. Not so much easier when you get murdered by Frost. I'm gonna try the SRL stream. And my smart wife finds Canoe Sage with Canoe as well. Time to dodge those frost wolves. That's a no-go. It's me and you, Nitz. <laughs> Let's do it. Moist Mogwai picks up her canoe from the sages who are off their medication. No Edgeworth blocking her, though. She's able to get away from the uh, circle of sages that... Not much of a circle confused. anymore. Yeah, not anymore. <laughs> it's a duck-duck goose of sages. We're two now, Nitz. You got the crown. Is it, is it a visit to return the crown to the, the kindly king of Northwest Castle? <laughs> yeah, Northwest Castle is kind of a curious name because it's kind of southwest of our current location. But uh, you know, it's the, it's a changing winds. It's the open progression. It's the ability to just uh, you know a party in their canoe, make their own way across the vast west wilderness. First, we'll probably visit the dwarves though. See what they've got. Yeah, two chests right in the Dwarf Cave. Shadow Walker, he's gonna stop off in the Dwarf Cave in just a moment. I gotta think that he's looking for money. And he finds a pile of it. Twelve grand at this point is some pretty fat stacks, so he's probably gonna be uh, pretty rich for a little bit here. That's right. One of the real bases, like we talked about in the 2019 Spring Tournament, is gonna be the Towns Are Shuffled. You could have an inner C in early game without heal potions, without save items, a lot of different things that are going to go on. And what's going to come up in just a little bit is um, that great flag that you made happen for the 2019 Spring Tournament. All that work that you did, and it's that free canal, is going to throw wrenches in all these matches throughout the tournament. Yeah, one of the um, sort of disappointing realities of the early game's item placement was that if the canal wasn't incentivized, it could be buried at the end of the game in some useless chest, and it really made the ship less interesting. So the free canal flag takes that out of, out of the way right off the bat. So as soon as you find the ship, you can sail the entire sea. And that, of course, gives the name and theme to this entire tournament. So we're really hoping that we get some early ships and, and get to see a lot of open sea sailing. Moist Mogwai has actually pulled even pretty much with Shadow Walker at this point. That lead has almost been erased. I missed exactly what happened. Did Shadow Walker, I think he took a wipe, but they're both hovering right around Northwest Castle right now. Looks like Shadow Walker bypassed uh, returning the, the, king, the crown to the kindly old king. I gotta think that that's, and that's, yeah. okay, it's Frost from the Wolves. Yeah, now the Frost Wolves are a real problem. I was talking big about how this was going to be a nice, uh, easy, smooth beginning because of the balance of the party, but the early magic has been poor, the early chests haven't had much in the way of weapons, and uh, those uh, frost wolves, not to be confused with frost wolves, which are a completely different thing. These are uh, wolves with frost. Frosty and, uh, wolves. <laughs> and uh, sure. they're not to be trifled with. 
Well, it's interesting, Shadow Walker wasn't really making use of the save items. Moist Mogwai is. To yeah. kind of progress through, so. Yeah. The, the, the save and reset technique is pretty key for getting through, like, an ugly overworld, so. That's like some table stakes kind of uh, tactics that I would expect to see him using. Multiple levels gained. Gosh, both players really even. They're right around the same area. They got the same amount of money. They're both getting frosty though, yeah. from the wolves. Yeah, yeah at some point you gotta like suck this up, get some tents, and uh, make your way across the plains here. There's no need to just keep running out there. Maybe this time I won't get hit by the frost wolves. Right, Shadow Walker just keeps resetting. He, he just keeps moving. Moist Mogwai went out and sa it said enough, turned around, headed back to Canaria. I gotta think that she she took the money, that 12 grand, and she's going back to get tense. Shadow Walker not doing that, playing very aggressively. Yeah, in the words of Steve w Miller, whoa, take the money and run. That's what you do. You get the money, you get some tents, and then you run to Elfland, just like Steve Miller indicated all those years ago. Once again, Shadow Walker, just trying to make the track towards the original Elfland, even with the canoe, continues to struggle. You can see him going through, and he's walking through the rivers, and sticking to the rivers that he's used to, really, and to avoid encounters as those are free steps. Veteran move from Shadow Walker yeah. 227. Low level party is taking a bit of a beating from this uh, ogre creep combo. Getting close to Elfland. So tantalizingly close. This could be ugly, though, as he's... Well, we've got... One black mage, everyone else paralyzed. Yeah, like you said, low-level parties. The wolves with frost Ooh. are gonna take you out. The creeps have a gets paralysis. Out. And he gets and to he's... Provoka. That's a lovely town to find. Key item, once you take care of those pirates, those sea-sailing, landlocked, forest-surrounded pirates. And... Level 2 nuke. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's gonna have two casters. Moist Mogwai will also have two casters of Nuke once she finally makes her way towards Provoka. The new Provoka, really. It's in the old Elfland. Vicky's on hard times. There's not a lot of sailing to be done anywhere near Elfland. It's definitely surrounded by forest. The What's interesting here is we have the canoe already. So, Marsh Cave is an incentivized location that's nearby. We've got the canoe that... There's the volcano in all its chest. There's uh, ice cave is incentivized. But first, Shadow Walker is going to take out the pirates just behind Moist Mogwai. We're going to see what the pirate Arr Bicky gives. We're kind of hoping for the ship. I think that would be more fun. But it could yeah. easily be the floater. It could be a lot of things at this point. Oxy Ale. Okay. Be... We haven't found on rack yet, have we? So, um, not sure where that's going to. I mean, it's going to lead to the Sea Shrine, but we're not sure Shit. when we're going to need it. Did Shadow Walker turn the herb in? I don't think he did. No, he hasn't gone to the to the castle yet. And we'll, we'll keep an eye on that as well. As Moist Mogwai closes in on Provoker, she's going to find that no cap two casters as well. It's easy to forget things like that. It, you're not used to Town Shuffle, you're not used to having an herb this early. Shadow Walker is leaving the new Provoka and wandering around looking for a fight to try to get nuke charges does not go to Elfland Castle with the herb in his inventory. And he gets taken out. He doesn't have... What? He didn't save? Nitz, what happened? Uh, my, my heart bleeds for this party. They have been accosted and, and destroyed so many times in those woods. But yeah, that's what it looks like happened. Moist Mogwai takes the lead. She's in the armor shop with the new Provoka. She's got to like seeing this. Moist Mogwai is a behind-the-scenes type of person in our community knits. She's not, she's not used to having the control in her hand. She has the headset on, and she's writing and typing. She's working behind the scenes. She's just taking yeah. the lead here at the 12-minute mark over Shadow Walker. Yeah, she's got a very important educational role. Like, she's taught a lot of people FFR and, like, the, the duckling tag and the whole introducing new players to the game. So she knows it very well, but you're right, she doesn't race a lot. So 
she's probably just gonna stick to the textbook and and play it straight and frankly if if uh, Shadow Walker keeps letting himself fall into these traps there's the ship so uh, Mogwai no. could take this one Moist Mogwai picks up the ship for turning in the herb Shadow Walker did he walk right by the dwarf cave and not get that money he's only got a couple hundred gold good thing that's the what happened he, he didn't recheck it bucks. Oh my goodness, see, this is the, you, you can psych yourself out early in, you know, first night, opening tournament, let's play tonight, it's 10 o'clock Eastern, I'm very sleepy, and then all of a sudden you start making all these little mistakes, and you forget to save, and then you forgot where you've been, and this is exactly oh. how you give your opponent advantages that you don't need to give them. Shadow Walker uses that nuke, takes out the pirates again. So he's gonna try to re-pick up his Oxio. Moist Mogwai actually missed talking to Vicky. Went back and had a little chit-chat with him. She's got her Oxio, and she's got her ship. The world is open. I mean, she can go almost yeah. anywhere she wants. Canoe and ship, you can get almost everywhere except Cardia, Gaia, Lafayne. But, uh, everything else. I, we had a match the other day, and it was a YouTube exclusive. It was great. Nitz, you were there, I was there. And um, Edgeworth made a play right here, right around this level, right around this time, with weaker spells. He went to Castle of Ordeal, and it paid off for him. That's a potential option too. Yeah, that was that was pretty ridiculous. Moist Mogwai has headed over to the Crescent Lake entrance, and we discover that it is in fact Elfland, which is great because you got level three magic and you got fast and saber at level three. That's uh, it's not bad to see at all. I like it. Also, Ice Two, if you want a little bit of. Uh, cheap AoE, but uh, with Nuke already at level 2, you don't really need Ice ice 2 at level 3. On the White Magic side, we've got Exit! This is looking excellent. That's huge. And of course, with the Forced White Mage, everyone's going to have access to that. Yeah. So, uh, things looking very bright, very speedy for these runners now. We've already found Nuke, we've got Fast, and we've got Exit. Level 4 White Magic. There's absolutely nothing. Probably the best spell there is Fear. Level 4 Black Magic. Let's see. Nothing wrong with Fire 3, but it's not too special either, and she's got no money left anyway. One thing that we didn't get a chance to note and touch on was level 3 white magic. The third slot is Ruse. That is not only Red Mage and obviously Red Wizard learnable, someone else can learn that spell too. <laughs> the knights that are plenty rigged enough as it is, but a knight with Ruse, I mean, that's just proper vanilla. Question from chat from Greglypuff, the man who needs no airship. Have we seen Lamp? We have. It was level one available in Canaria and by far and clearly the best spell in level one. White Magic. Sadly, no takers. No takers. Shadow Hawker does not have the ship. He just he just went to his menu with the herb in it, but he has not turned in. Is headed to Marsh Cave. Well, statistically, now that we know that the ship is in play early, Marsh Cave does have an incentive item, so at least you've got that going for you. It could, of course, be any any incentivized item. Otherwise, not the not the best play, but you know, check this one off the list because it's nearby. You can hit up the incentive item. Maybe it's the floater, and it'll change the game in his favor, even though he missed the ship. That would be an incredible coincidence. Oh no. Oh no, you don't want anybody with Zap when your party is so low level. Oof. Moist Mogwai is going to relax a little bit. She knows the spells that she has. It's Nuke at level 2. There was an Ice in 3 or 4 as well. Fast is available. She's going to relax outside Crescent Lake, slow things down a little bit. She's going to get some levels. I like this play. And then, you know, really the world is completely open to her. Yeah, a little bit of early grinding, just a taste of it, to get into, you know, 100, 200 HP, that can really help you early. Just survive all the weaker AoE spells that otherwise just decimate your party and so forth. I, I love doing that, especially when her strategy so far has been, you know, slow and steady could win this race, and frankly it can. This is a first round of a tournament, you don't really know, everyone's going to be a little jittery, people are going to make lots of mistakes, and, and both runners have made minor mistakes. Um, shadow even more of them, so if, you know, most Mogwai why sticks with this strategy, it could, it could prove very effective in tonight's race. Shadow Walker has made it to the incentivized chest in Marsh Cave. He's ran into wizards. He drew four, mm. he's gonna draw four of them, and they've ambushed him. 
Shadow Walker he's got the nuke. fires the nuke, he's gonna get away with it. He lost yes. the fighter, though. He's gotta get out of here. Yeah, losing the fighter is gonna make this perilous. Oh, you want to pop that ribbon on right away. The Gotta move the chain onto the red mage. Gotta move the chain over to the red mage. Move the chain. Ah, there we go. Like a proper NFL team. When it matters, he moves the chains. Question from Elastoid in chat. Any access to the life spell? I have not seen it. I don't even think I saw a shadow check the level 2 white magic shop, come to think of it. But yeah, it doesn't look like either of these runners... Well, he certainly doesn't. I haven't seen white smog wise magic, white, uh, level 2 white magic myself. Marsh is probably not required. It had a ribbon, though. Can't argue with that. Another thing that we have not seen our players do with Nuke at level 2... They both have the crown in their inventory, so they have not returned that to the kindly king of Northwest Castle. Moist Mogwai does have the ship. She turned the herb in. But Shadow Walker is going through his menu. He keeps going through it, and he keeps clicking over the herb in the crown. So we're going to see what his next move is. <laughs> Dental plan. Lisa needs braces. Dental plan. Lisa needs braces. We'd like to thank Zardia and Lyra SRL jumped in, said, do you guys need help? Can we help you? They've jumped in, they've joined us here, helping us out with tracking on this uh, day zero, maybe, Mitz, of the zero. 2019 Spring Tournament. Two good friends going at it, dropping the gloves, gonna jump in, sail the high seas is the theme and the name of the 2019 Spring Tournament. Moist Mogwai, left side of your screen, Mama Duck herself, against Shadow Walker 227. Oh! Toxic. If, uh, if there it is. Oh man, that ribbon. That ribbon's doing good work. Can he Toxic. get out of here? Toxic from the crawls. Oh. And going after Shadow Walker. He's he's, he's got the he put the ribbon he's on the dead. black mage nits. The problem with that is yes, it protects your Duke caster. Yes, it protects your best runner. But your black mage Bill in this case for Shadow Walker. He's not the most durable of light warriors. He, yeah, well, I mean, he wasn't very fleet of foot either. I think you put it on old Billy because he had the best chance to run without a thief. But uh, Billy just kept tripping over those damn robes, and now Billy's dead. And so is everyone else, and he has to do this all again. Moist Mogwai, meanwhile, turned in the crown. She talked to the kindly old Kignitz. It was Astos. It was Astos all along! <laughs> and he had the TNT, what? which... He had some dynamite action. Just, yeah, that's just cruel. I mean, he's their neighbor, and he wouldn't even cough up the TNT. I... So that Narek could, like, blow the free canal that was already there. Voice and... Mogwai is gonna go ahead. She turns into TNT. She's got the rod. Hooray! Moist Mogwai <laughs> talks to the Hooray Dwarf. <laughs> picks it up. Lord Fizzleby picks up on it. Aikman Maya's in the chat. Thank you for everything you do, Maya. All the work that you do is fantastic. Meanwhile, Shadow Walker... Oh, no. There's those crawls again. Got Shadow the nuke Walker. off. Got the nuke off, though. He's gonna get the nuke off. There's a couple of, you know, you one nuke, two nuke, three nuke, four, because eventually you run out of nukes. He's already lost his red mage. Moist Mogwai jumps back in her ship. This is why we call this Sail the High Seas. The free canal is on. Does Moist Mogwai recognize that? She has not played much of this. Again, once again, Moist Mogwai is a behind the scenes type of person, a leader. We don't call it Sail the High Seas for nothing. Everyone knows the free canal. That's the heart and soul of this. I hope everyone knows that. Shadow There's Walker. a 50-50 shot. The Shadow Walker does not know that. <laughs> Shadow Walker gonna try to get out of the Marsh Cave. Looks like he's gonna go ahead and get out just fine. 
Meanwhile, speaking of getting out, Moist Mogwai has left the Intercontinent. Utilizing that free canal, she's headed towards the original Melmon town. Towns are shuffled. Looks like she's going to find Onrak. She's got the Oxiel Nits. She's taking a southerly course now. Um, Melmond is nowhere to be seen. Truly embracing the sail of high seas. Shadow Walker's gonna try to regroup. He knows that Marsh Cave, we, we essentially have seen that cleared. We haven't seen the key locked areas. But we know that Marsh Cave does not require, you do not have to go there. Moist Mogwai has not done that at all. If she can avoid that dungeon dive, this that, that's a potential huge, you know, coup for the underdog in this match for Moist Mogwai. <laughs> Shadow stops off at the clinic. Yeah, and another thing, uh, Ikben Mai is pointing it out. Moist Mogwai has the Oxiel. She's found the town of Unrak. She has access to the Sea Shrine. You know what else Moist Mogwai has access to? She's got a spell. It's in White Magic. It's called Exit. That makes a Sea Shrine dive at ridiculously low levels. I don't know who would ever do that. Uh, much more viable. And she's gonna swing out to the west here and, and go visit the uh, caravan. This is a clever play, because this is something you almost completely forget about. But we haven't seen the vendor item yet, so... That's the angle here. And, uh... This could be a big deal, like, what, what, he could have the floater for sale, and then boom, like, that that might seal it, because that's the last thing on Shadow Walker's agenda right now, is sailing out to the caravan to see what's for sale. Yeah, he can't even turn in the herb, apparently. We've got, it looks like we're gonna cite a vendor item here, Nets. It is yeah. in the caravan. Moist Mogwai yeah, we're gonna finds be... it. Yeah, BBL. B-B-I-A-B. I uh, cannot, cannot afford, do want, a 40 something thousand dollar tail, that's gonna break the bank. <laughs> she says, no, I'll be right back. Life 2 at level 5, that's more her speed, but, uh, looks like it's not learnable. The original town of Onrek has been shuffled to Meridian, BC's favorite town, it's Melmond. I think Warp's Fun. in the vanilla spot. That warp, that's the third slot. That's class yeah. change lock. No warp. Yeah. No warp no. for you. No. And uh, it's not going to be any tail for you for a long time either because it was 45 grand at the caravan. Be a while before we get a chance to go back. Interesting. Shadow Walker 227 has headed back to the beginning of the game in the, in the Castle Canaria and Canaria Town area. He's headed towards the Temple of Fiends, and the three chests that he skipped, he's going to check these three chests because he went straight to Garl and worry about his magic situation. Yeah, I think the, the Life 2 was actually learnable, come to think of it. Like the first slot, I think, is. Yep, first slot is. First, but, uh, actually, Life 2 is learnable in the first slot of level 5 by the Red Mage. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I don't think she took it. Oh, look at that! Well, that's something that wow. nobody expected. For everyone oh. following along slightly behind us, I thought I would just hesitate a bit, but I believe now it should be clear that the chime was in the Temple of Fiends. Yeah, there's two loose items. There's a distinct possibility that the ruby is not required, the ribbon is never required, neither is the tail. We know that the tail's the vendor item, but the chime is absolutely required. There's going to be two loose out in the world, no matter what. Sometimes there's even three. We'll cross that bridge when and if we get to it. The chime is one of them absolutely required. Shadow Walker. Advantage. He's got the chime. In a chest that Moist Mogwai... Avoided. Mogwai taking a page out of uh, Edge's book here and sailing to Ordeals. Another, um... Incentive item. It's a nice play because again, this could be the floater. I, I feel like there's a bit of a floater hunt going on here. Like hit all the incentive locations yeah. and try and find them as soon as possible. It's and the pretty. What brought Shadow Walker to do that check is that he hasn't turned in the earth. He he doesn't see it in his inventory. So he's like, okay, yeah. well there must be something loose. So he's looking for a progression. 
Now, he's got the canoe. Whether or not he realizes he can jump in that river system and head towards the original Crescent Lake, the water, or the uh, ice cave in the volcano, well, I don't know that. But he's backtracking right now, and part of that is him not seeing the ship. Yeah. No, for sure. Um, huge advantage to Mo that uh, it looks like Shadow doesn't realize that he has to turn in the herb. Small uh, consolation for Shadow is that it's going to be a while before Mo gets back to the Temple of Fiends and finds the chime. Like, there's going to be a lot of things that she checks before she remembers to do that. So, there's there's uh, skin in the game for both runners here. This one isn't over yet. We'll see how this plays out. Mo's got a lead now, but that could vanish if she loses a ton of time chime hunting. Shadow Walker moving farther and farther away from where he should have gone quite a while ago, and he walks around. He's going to walk around the river system with the canoe that he's got. And uh, he's moving away from Elfland Castle. He needs that ship, Nitz, and uh, oh, it's, it's good that he's got the chime. But I, who's our leader here? I have no idea. Chat, what do you think? I... Every time he opens that inventory to heal a party member, it's like sitting right there. I would agree with Elastoid and Maya. Even Maya are saying it as well. It is, it is Moist Mogwai. As we are nearing the 30 minute mark, uh, I think it's safe to say Shadow Walker 227 is a heavy favorite in this match. I think both of them would say that. I think both of them would laugh. Like I said, we said earlier, these two are good friends. Right now, Moist Mogwai is your leader at the 30 minute mark. Yeah, we're, we're poised for a big swing too, if there's something good at the top of uh, Castle Ordeals. Question from chat from Gregly Puff. Has either player killed Astos? Uh, Moist Mogwai has. She took out uh, the kindly old king who was asked us all along. He handed over the dynamite, and the dynamite turned into... The rod? The rod. So, uh, yeah, Earth Cave. Free for her as well. Shadow Walker has not turned in either the crown or the herb. They are both in his inventory. He's gone through them both times, and he's going the absolute... Ah, whoa. He's gonna... Thought, he looked at his mini. He looked at he paused over it, but he, he doesn't see it. No, this time he's actually reading everything they have to say, just to remind himself <laughs> what to do. <laughs> Moist Mogwai is struggling in Castle Ordeal. It's it living like up to his name. She's, yeah, she's had to start over now. Yeah. But it, with uh, the pillars memorized, it's a much shorter dungeon, so if she can remember which ones to go through, this won't take so long. But yeah, there was, uh, it was ugly at the top. Just about almost a dozen chests here in Castle Ordeal. It is incentivized, though. We know that the ribbon is out of the incentive pool that was located in Marsh Cave. We know that Marsh Cave is not required, we think. Highly likely that it's not. Shadow Walker has turned back around. He's back towards Canaria. He's headed in the right direction. Yeah. I saw him pause when he was on his yeah. menu, and I think he realized it. Did you see that, Nets? Oh yeah, you have one of those moments where you're like, Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's the old saying, right? You know what's the best part about banging your head against the wall? When it you feels great when, when you stop. When you stop. <laughs> and he just stopped banging his head against the wall. So he's a little frustrated, but it feels great. I'm sure he feels a little relieved. Now, what do you think here, Nets? You do this. You're Shadow Walker. You're at 30 minutes. You didn't turn in the crown of the herb. You're, I, I would think, are about to find out that you can get the dynamite in the ship. Do you, do you feel behind? I think you have to feel behind because it was like something you got right off the bat. So, um, I mean, you, there's going to be a little pressure to maybe do something. Oh, there's those frost wolves again. Poor Shadow. It's just been one thing after another. So, does it change what you do? A great deal. It depends on who you're chasing. Um, I think that he's probably not going to change it up too much. He just has to, uh, like, really kind of tighten the screws a bit and get across the world map without subjecting himself to frost walls. You got to do the saves coming. You got to start just play the game a little better and see if you can make up some time because it's still early, even if you are behind. Moist Mogwai has made her way to the final level of Castle Ordeal. 
She's gonna raid these chests. She's probably looking for a caster item. Looks like she's gonna get a caster item. Thor's hammer. She's gotta like seeing that. And... We've got... We've got we're about nine here. seconds. This is big for Moist Mogwai. She's closing in on the incentivized chest. Is it the floater? Is it, some, is it the crystal? Is it something that leads to the floater? Because Elastor was talking about it in chat right now. And folks, if, if you can hear my voice, this gentleman, Elastoid, the most underrated player in Final Fantasy Randomizer, he says the floater blows this wide open. I gotta agree. Yeah, of course. Without question. It's um, it's like a triathlon, you know? If you're both jogging and one person's a little bit ahead of the other, they're a little bit ahead. But if you're the first person to get to the bicycle, all of a sudden, your gap widens dramatically. And uh, even when they finally get there, you're, you have that much more distance ahead of you. It's not a situation where the time changes because they're actually walking around place to place looking for the damn bicycle. That's where the metaphor breaks down. But the important thing is, <laughs> you want to start going faster, and when you find the floater, you can. The incentivized item in Castle of Ordeal is the ruby. Now right, so, what, Nitz? Well, now what? you already have the rod. So you can, like, sail down there and clean up that whole thing. You can cash in the ruby, you can go to Sarda, and then if you want, you can actually defeat the Earth Cave entirely. So maybe that's not such a bad play, because you're still looking for um, loose items if you're if you're a Mogwai. So I don't mind it. See where Moist Mogwai goes next. Right now, she's got to solve the riddle of the Sphinxes. This fight is taking a long time for Moist Mogwai. He's starting to struggle yeah, well, with the Sphinxes. Oh, well, that would uh, that would be a shame. Moist Mogwai did not save after doing Castle Ordeal, I don't think. Moist Mogwai's fight, this is taking forever. This is a problem that Thor's hammer is not getting it done. And the Sphinxes are starting to wail on Moist Mogwai. Moist Mogwai is stunlocked. Dizzy, spinning endlessly is Moist Mogwai. She is struggling. I don't think she saved Nitz. Oh, we'll find out. She did not. A little bit of hesitation. I'm going to say that's one of those... Uh, well, would she have really walked away without the... Gotta check, gotta check, She's... gotta check. Yeah. Right. I don't see a ruby. Moist Mogwai walked away from Castle Ordeal. Says forget it. Thor's hammer and the ruby. She knows where it is. Yeah. She double checked her menu and she paused over it. So that's totally fine as long as Sarda doesn't have the floater or something that leads to the floater. <laughs> Meanwhile, Shadow Walker 227, the favorite in this match on the right hand side of your screen, moves up to a whole level 7. At the 35 minute mark, he's realized and remembered that he has the canoe. And he's headed towards the original Crescent Lake area. He's gonna find out that this is Elfland, and he's gonna be happy to find the spells. But he's not gonna be happy when he realizes what's in his inventory. Yeah, for everybody, you know, in their comfortable chairs at home, being like, oh my goodness, how can Shadow forget he has the herb? How can Mogwai forget to save after she gets the ruby and then just walk away from the whole dungeon? This is a tournament, people. It's real, and there's a ton of pressure, and it's the opening night, and everyone's, like, like they are tense, man. You're on pins and needles when you're racing one of these things. It's not just a casual sort of educational race. It changes everything when you put the word tournament in front of it, and uh, that's why it's so exciting. Anyone can win. Anyone can blunder at any time, and I just love this kind of action, and hope you do too. Yeah, that's, that's you know, what we're here for. That's why it is that we do this. We love this game. We grew up with this game. And, you know, is there added pressure, Nitz, do you think, playing a friend? Ah, uh, well, see, it, it does because, like, you want to, you don't want them to win because you, like, gave it to them. It's just no good. But on the other hand, then you heap pressure on yourself to put, to, you know, and then it, it just, it all collapses. Like, you're, you gotta treat it like any other race. Because the reality is, this is like golf. You can't actually compete. You just have to play as well as you can. And if that's better than the other person, you win. There's no cheating, there's no tricks, there's no interrupting them. It's just, you play, they play, and the fastest player wins. 
And it, as soon as you start making it more complicated than that, that's when you start making silly mistakes. And both runners are doing it, so it's making for a really exciting race. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're at the 37 minute mark now. Shadow Walker 227 continues to go to his menu, where the herb and the crown are, and just paddling, paddling away. He's headed towards the ice cave. Oh, I don't know about this, Nitz. I know you got Nuke and everything, but he's level seven. Uh, this is uh, this is a recipe. <laughs> if if there's any um, you know omen for the whole thing, it's the first step you take in the ice cave is six wizards. I think that that's the kind of message that you should uh, listen to. But no, he's going in and he's going for the incentive item at the bottom. And again, you know, if this is the vanilla floater. This is a huge swing back in Shadow's favor. Yeah, he's way behind right now, we know that, but just takes a couple of swings. Mago lost a lot of time dying in ordeals. All of a sudden, it starts to crumble. Yeah, this could be the crystal. Potentially that could lead to the floater. It could be the slab. And, and that, if that happens, we know that Melmond is somewhere else. He hasn't seen it. Moist Mogwai, his opponent, found it. Oh. We haven't seen Lafayne. I. It's oh that ice gosh. cave. If that encounter, just like all the big clumps of nasty undead down here, and there's like six enemies in a battle, seven enemies in a battle. Ah, oh, they got poison touch and cremate. Just it's. At some point, you gotta say enough is enough. This is a horrible mistake. <laughs> Question from chat from Ikbin Maya. Has there been a sign of warp yet? There has. It is in the new Melmond, which was in the original Onrak. It's class change lock, though. It's in its original slot. It's actually unshuffled in the third slot of level 5 Black Magic. Yeah, vanilla location, which means class locked. The tail is for sale at the vendor, at the, the caravan vendor, for 43000 so no one's going to have that for a while, so... We won't see a lot of warp, I don't think. Shadow Walker's gonna take oh the trap tile goodness. with the mages. They have cremate. Oh. Shadow Walker's getting rocked by the mages. He's yeah. he's gonna have to reset. He he's gotta reset. He's gotta go back in. This is that's right now. It's round two. How how many times is he gonna have to dive into this? No. Well, he... I've made one too many references already, and I've got one more. This is the last crusade when you're reaching for that cup, you know, and you're like, I can make it, I can make it. He was so close to that pit, and then it takes you down to different encounters. You don't have to deal with the stupid cremate mages and the stupid cremate race and the stupid cremate whatever else. And uh, he just, he saw that finish line, and I was like, oh, i got to get further because the next time it's going to be different. But... You know what? It's going to be exactly the same. There are very few humans on this planet, in this galaxy, the that will get the I can make it, I can make it, and I'm one of them, Nits. I can reach it. <laughs> I can... Indiana. <laughs> Let Indiana. it go. <laughs> Let it go. Moist Mogwai is returning to Castle Ordeal. I like this play. She got rocked a little bit. She made a mistake and she didn't save. It frustrates you. It is never going to happen again. As best as she can do. She knows the path. She knows what's in there. She knows what the Thor's hammer is. You like to have that item. She's going to get through this and re-evaluate and go from there. Meanwhile, Shadow Walker's on his second dive into the ice cave. Do you skip that mage guarded chest, Nitz? Knowing that they have cremate when you're level 7? Uh, maybe. That's a definite maybe. It's not incentivized. There is an incentivized chest. I think you gotta you gotta go for the gusto and, and get the important thing because I mean that's what you came here for, and that's yeah, exactly. Like, what's... Yeah, it looks like he heads left and he skips it. But the death Shadow hit. Walker, he skipped the mages with the cremate. He dives down and hits the mandatory trap tile of a bunch of undead. They have cremate. Of course they do, and we knew that from like two floors ago, and this insanely difficult encounter, which is always chock full of these guys, is just waiting for him. Oh, he gets the nuke off. That's a, you know what, honestly, that's that's a good roll there. So you've got to do this twice too. So just because he survived it once, if he, uh, unless he has exit, I hope he does, then he can actually avoid it the second time. Yeah. He's got a couple charges of exit, but the way Shadow Walker's been using his menu in this match, I don't, 
I don't know if it matters or not. Does, I, does he know that he has charges of exit? <laughs> yes, I do, I do believe he does. And I believe he's got uh, the spell and charges, of course. Moist Mogwai has made it to the final floor of the Castle of Ordeal. Gonna pick up that Thor's hammer and the ruby. Question from Chad, is this the first race of the tournament? It sure is, or at least you could say it's tied for first, because I believe there's already another uh, couple of private races. They're not all being restreamed, but um, there are multiple races underway already. Everyone's champing at the bit. They love FFR. They're really enthused about these uh, spring tournament flags. Who can blame them? And boom, get these matches underway. Moist Mogwai has her ruby. That gives her access to Sarda and an incentive location to Sarda potentially hold the ruby. And is this a ruby required match? Now she turn it in now. So many different ways she can go. She can hit the waterfall. She's got exit. Yeah, you, that's not too far away. And with exit, I like the waterfall play a lot. Um, because you, you've been so close now. And if it's something, you know, that you don't need, at least you can not come back to this area. Once again, you can see Moist Mogwai, she's taking multiple encounters out on the sea. She's taking the Sehag encounters. Yeah, she's taking them out, but what Moist Mogwai needs to do, it looks like she's going to do it. Save just a little bit more and reset and, and get out of these encounters. You're at 44 minutes into a match, and you don't want to be fighting Sehags. Moist Mogwai's starting to adjust to not do that anymore. Very good play. Veteran move from Mama Duck. Yeah, the um, the time versus EXP in, in all the fights throughout this game, generally you want to lead to words running away a lot. It's just a lot faster, and most battles aren't worth the EXP of like a well-selected trap tile or something in that in that vein. So yeah, you want to run away a lot. But early game, grabbing a few quick levels can make you so much more survivable, so... Knowing when to stop taking those fights, that's something that just comes with experience. The moment of truth is coming up for Shadow Walker. He's got to get through the eye. <laughs> just runs away, grabs the and crystal. Then... We have no idea what that leads to, so it's as good as an... Oh, oh, no! He does not cast Exit. He throws himself into the lion's den once again. Let's see if he can get out. These undead have cremate and everything, but he's going to use the light axe. He's going to be able to weed out most of them. He's got the crystal. The crystal's going to lead to something. Can everything bail Shadow Walker out? Does Matoya have... It's, it's kind of Matoya or Sarda right now that could lead to changing the status quo of the floater. What do you think, Nitz? The crazy old lady or the uh, retired old man? <sighs> Which one do I think has the better item? Boy, that's, that's a straight-up toying cast. I'm throwing it to chat. You know what? This is not a job for me. This is a job for chat. Kiyo Katsuki, what's the answer in chat? Which one of Matoya or Sarda has a more important progression item? Alright. We got, we got Sarda? Sarda? We got one vote for Sarda. Sarda! <laughs> toga! Toga! <laughs> we got a neither. It could be loose. That's a good point from Kiyo. It could be, should could be. be. The whole point is to guess. <laughs> I didn't ask you for a concrete answer. It's randomized. No one could possibly know. Moist Mogwai has made her way towards the original Melmond, and she's going to start walking. It looks like she's going to turn in that ruby. I think this is the right play. Yeah, I mean, you're here now. If this was what you're going to do, this is this is what you're going to do. And uh, I think you turn in the ruby, you loot the chests, is it Sarda, you grab the item. I'm very tempted. Her party's good enough now, I think. You can go down there and take out Lich while you're here. One. Some people might say, Earth Cave, you're gonna waste time checking chests, but I, th I think it's the right thing to do if you're gonna package it all up. Two loose items, 2019 Spring Tournament. One has been located. It's the Chime. It was free as can be in one of the three free chests in the Temple of Fiends. Shadow Walker has it. A worry for, for Moist Mogwai, any fans of Moist Mogwai would be, uh, I don't know if she's going to go there anytime soon. If she uh, happens upon the Mystic Key, say Sarda hands that thing over, mm. then uh, then I could see popping in, you know, you do all the, the Mystic Key stuff, and then when you're in the Temple of Fiends, you're like, oh, wait, I don't think I did those other rooms either, so it could happen.
The nuke takes out George and the ogres. Alright, so the Titan's Trove has a large knife, a heal potion, a house, and... 1500 GP. And you're still hungry. Just resets right out of that garbage. Oh, there's the key. That's the mystic key? That's the mystic key. Pretty important. You can yeah. see Shadow Walker, he, he leaves Matoya's cave, but again, he, he's not using the canoe to, to cut through the river system? Ah, there he is, now he is. Okay, good. Yeah, okay. He will, uh, the Mystic Key required item. Uh, Matoya had it. That's a pretty good item. There's pretty much only one item other than the loot, which is also required, that could trump that. It would be the floater or something that leads to it. You think I just referenced classic rock old movies and... <laughs> I also reference video games. Um, a last story putting out in chat. Uh, a few of the thing, a few of the missteps of Shadow Walker. Um, the the herb. Uh, the spell. We don't have to enumerate everybody's failures. Right. Um, once we get around to me, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I know. Also the crown. The crown was not turned in uh, to the kindly king. Ah, uh, the bottle. We know where Guy is. It's early we game, do. so we can go back there and get yet another item. That would be sort of tempting, but since you're here, what do you think, Will? Do you head over to Earth Cave and clean it up? No. No? No? Yeah, I, I know oh, you've okay. got Nuke, and you've got the exit and everything, and you've got the rod. Yeah, you can do the whole thing, but we're nearing an hour mark. We're in the, nearing the hour mark. Now, you're playing against your friend. You're playing against a great player. Shadow Walker 227 is outstanding. You you gotta change the game. You gotta make it get it going. You gotta turn in that bottle. Hit back to that guy. He's outstanding in the woods, is what he is. Is he finally like <laughs> he's got the flame sword? All right. Hey Nets, did you mm -hmm. hear about the uh, uh, the really good? Uh, he's in Melmond. He's a farmer. Do you know about him? I'm a farmer. I'm a farmer. He's a. Did you hear what the really good farmer was doing? No. He was outstanding in his field. Mm -hmm. Very clever. Yeah, that. whenever I see that I'm a farmer, I always read it in a Ralph Wiggum voice. I'm a farmer. Okie dokie. I'm just going to clean up all those key chests now. Yeah. There's, there's more loose items to look for, so this is a nice uh, high-density room packed with good stuff. 2019 Final Fantasy Randomizer Spring Tournament Action Day Zero. We're here on Lord Fizzlebee's channel. Nitz, one of our lead developers, along myself. My name is Will Cleosis. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. I hope you're enjoying it. We got so much of this coming. It's going to be so fun. Inaugural match. Good friends. Moist Mogwai, Mama Duck versus Shadow Walker 227. Behind the scenes, Zardia, Lyra, SRL, and our restreamer, Lord Fizzlebeef. Thank you for making this happen. Yeah, Shadow just not feeling the exit spell. Just, you know, I don't know if it releases carbon dioxide or what, but he's just, like, he wants to walk. I mean, he just needs to stretch the legs, you know? These light warriors getting, I mean, he needs getting soft. Size. I mean, exactly. Request from chat for a recap. Well, we're approaching the hour mark. Yeah. Still got, uh, still got eight and a half minutes to go before that. Yeah, but, we got a ways uh, to go. The hour yeah. Mark. The reality is we haven't had any orbs lit yet, and no one has the floater, so there is so much to play, and, you know, vanishingly little to recap, but uh, let's give it a shot, shall we? The, uh, the main, probably, recap thing that is going on is... The Chime is one of the loose items obviously required. It's in a free chest that Moist Mogwai skipped Shadow Walker got. Shadow Walker has not turned in the herb, the crown. Uh, he's playing catch up to the underdog Moist Mogwai at this point in time as we near the hour mark. Yeah, right off the bat, the king actually gave the crown and Sarda 
Sarah, pardon me. Princess Sarah gave the herb. So you had those right off the bat. And even though the Northwest Castle is not far, and uh, Alfheim Castle also not that far away, uh, Shadow Walker has failed to cash in either of those items. And in particular, the Prince had the ship, which really opens up the whole world. So Shadow Walker a little bit behind because he's yet to do any of that. On the other hand, he has cleared out the Ice Cave, which led to the Crystal, which led to the Mystic Key. So he has a whole bunch more chests that he has opened, and he's got the Chime from the Temple of Fiends. On the other side, and like just just completely different progression, um, Moist Mogwai has got the ship early and has sailed through the canal and has traveled the world and done a number of things. She found the ruby was in Ordeals and then picked it up. She knows also that the tail is for sale at the caravan and that um, Onrak is the actual town of Melmond because she's visited there as well. And then she went down and visited Sarda and got an item from him. Uh, returned the crown to the Northwest Castle to get the TNT, brought that to Narek for the rod, so she has access to the entire Earth Cave. So they have done completely different things. Yeah, totally different. Uh, spell access lamp was available at level 1 white magic, very important. Uh, possibly more important, depending on who you ask, nuke. Available for two light warriors for both players tonight at level 2. That was in, obviously, Provoka, which was shuffled. The new Provoka is in a ver the very accessible elf land. Moist Mogwai is going for the Earth Cave. The Waterfall, also an incentivized location as well. We see Shadow Walker 227 has re-entered Marsh. He's got the Mystic Key in hand. We know, and we're going to find out fairly quickly, that Marsh Cave is actually not required in this match, in this particular seed. It's incentivized location. How's the Ribbon? Desired, preferred... Not required. Is that, I believe uh, a Moist Mogwai checking some chests. Looks like she's going to dig up a Sun Sword. That's a pretty significant improvement over the Rune Sword. You know, that's your pretty much best pre-promotion sword. Um, I mean, not including Massa. Miss Mogwai's going to continue her chest checking. She's got the exit spell as well. We'll see how deep she decides to go. She's going to pick up another sword pretty quick. Looks like it might be the ice sword. So, yeah. again, more desired items. She's going to stare at her menu uh, in just a moment. Does she see Does she see the bottle? Does she use the exit spell? Mm-hmm. And then back in. So, uh, happy with gaining some EXP. Didn't want to fight that trap tile again. Figures just restore all the charges and start over. It's not, it wasn't that far in, just cleaned out the B2, so I like that play. Meanwhile, Shadow Walker 227 yeah. has cleared out the key locked marsh area. I didn't see if there was anything good in there. If there was, I missed it, Nitz, but whatever it is, he's walking out instead of either resetting or using that exit spell. Again, Gaia, I think, was provoked. Didn't we find it right off the bat? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing interesting from Lyra, our tracker. Thank you again, Lyra. But Shadow Walker's walking it out. Maybe he got some levels that he wanted. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I thought we found Gaia very early. Is it Melmon? Was it Elfland? Wait, wait, we haven't seen Gaia. That was Onrak. You know what? The original Melmon is it has been shuffled to Onrak. We've got the Oxio. Yeah, it's that entirely possible. we got to dig down there to the massive treasure trove right. with, uh, with the mermaids. I, there, I, the, the path through this uh, seed has truly been meandering. I do Here. It's one trip. Know your, you should know your encounter table at this point in time. I would have, I would have gone there already, personally. Especially with access to exits. Uh, Thor's hammer is available and nuke. We'll see if any player... Well, Moist Mogwai is really the only one that can go there. She's the only one with the ship as we near the hour mark.
Ah, Mogwai doing what I thought I would do, and taking care of the entirety of the Earth Cave. It might not be super fast thing to do, because your party's not, like, as rigged as you would normally like it to be, to just waltz through this place, but, uh... I think she'll have a pretty good go of it, and then you don't have to come back. Shadow Walker 227 is in the right area. He's hanging out around the original Elfland and Elfland Castle area. And he left without turning in the herb or the crown that are in his inventory. So he is not picked up quite yet, but the answer is right in front of me. I've done this, Nitz. I mean, you've watched me do this. I've been made fun of. This happens. It's it's just so easy to do. Yeah, you sort of get carried away thinking it's maybe vanilla fetch quests or something, so you gotta find the crown to do that sequence, which, of course, I believe he also has. So, it's, um... One wonders what's going on there, but yeah, just not drawing the connection between all those early fetch items and actually returning them right away. And, uh, if he doesn't uh, figure this one out soon... Oh, look at that! Both players have entered Fiend Dungeons. Moist Mogwai wandering around the Earth Cave, looking to clear that. Shadow Walker has made his way to the volcano. Picks up a dragon armor. Shadow Walker is going to run into an encounter. Oh, oh gosh. Shadow I Walker feel... runs into peds. That's that's <laughs> good stuff. We'll just wait a few seconds. And they blizzard him. And there. And B3 of Earth Cave, where old Nitsy is. Oh in. my! We've got it! It's loose, Nitz! It's loose. And it was in the Earth Cave where old Nitz was like, maybe we should just clean that out while we're here, hey? Wow. And you're all like, no, 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 no. Wow. Well, now, um... Maya's taking the words out of my. He's typing the words out of my mouth. Do you exit here? Or do you. Do you continue it? I mean, you're halfway through the dungeon. I, I mean, I, if I was in her position, I would assume that I am now almost certainly way ahead because everything has been going well and you're doing something slightly unusual. The early Earth Cave cleanout, like nobody does that. So even just knowing where the floater is, I think is worth it. Now. I would, I would do what this what looks like. I think she's gonna do and, and clean this thing out. And if I died because there was something horrible down there, then I would just grab the floater and exit. But um, I think I would finish this off here. Nearing the hour mark, Moist Mogwai. I, I would, I would argue. I don't think you can argue. Our leader at the hour mark, the underdog. Oh yeah, no big time now, especially if she gets out of here with the floater. Shadow Walker is going to continue the dive here in the volcano. He thinks this is the last location. He's done marsh. He did the key locked areas. He's not going to find what it is that he's looking for. He might find a power gauntlet or something, but he's going to be very confused once he okay. finishes doing this volcano. Yeah, he has to, like, take stock, look at his inventory, and go, Ah, oh, come on, how did I forget about that? And then cash those things in. And then he's still got an almost unfathomable amount of catching up to do. Moist Mogwai in the driver's seat. You know, we, we talked about it in the pregame. We just kind of touched on it, Nitz. We talked about last year and that opening match and the history and the amazing match that it was between our restreamer tonight, Lord Fizzlebeef, and Brilliant, fighting chaos at the same time, multiple times, in the ups and downs. And it was incredibly memorable. I would say legendary. Do we potentially open the 2019 Spring Tournament with this type of upset? I mean, could it be? Shadow Walker has been uh, heavily active in the other ongoing Final Fantasy Randomizer tournament right now. I'll, <laughs> I'll throw some hype their way. The uh, Chaos Rush tournament is finishing up. It is completely different, right? Yeah. You just, you start, you grind, you go kill Chaos. It's a very interesting format, but it's nothing like these traditional playthroughs that this spring term is all about. Slow, pedantic, exploring, fetch quests, remembering what you're doing, what things cost, what's for sale, what's cheap, what's out of reach, what it needs class change. No, 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 no. He's been doing Chaos Rush. 
and you can't just jump from one to the other and not expect a transition period and that's what he's suffering through right now the growing pains of, of trying to remember how to do this by the book right and um that has left the door wide open for Moist Mogwai, and she's kind of done this like slow and steady uh, approach that has been working out really well. And uh, I'm all for that Earth grind. Now, someone's like, I would never do full Earth clear, and I'm like, well, you know, it presented itself. You already had the ruby, you had a good reason to be there, you don't have the floater, you have no idea where it is, you're running out of incentive locations. You don't want to sail back and forth across the world a whole bunch of times. If you're here, maybe it's take a shot and try and get it done. And uh, it has worked out swimmingly. As far as Moist Mogwai Mama Duck goes, she knows there's one other loose item out there. She's going to go ahead and full clear Earth, and she'll have access to the airship. Meanwhile, Shadow Walker continues his dive deeper and deeper. He's realized that he has the exit spell. That's good. And he's going to dig this out, and it's going to be pivotal what Shadow Walker decides to do. Does he do the, I'm lost, I don't know what to do. I'm going to go to my menu, and I'm going to go to the item screen, and I'm going to take a look around. That's what I do when I feel like I'm missing something, Nitz, and that could be what Shadow Walker really needs, is to kind of slow down, take a look, relax, and just look what it is that he has on hand. Yeah, I think another reason for uh, Moist Mogwai to take her time is there's two loose items in, in these Swiss flags. That's quite a bit of loose items. <laughs> I know, two is a lot. But what it does mean is when you find something like, and, until you've found them both, the both of the loose items, I mean, you kind of, your initial approach to most dungeons is full clear, I think. Because you don't want to miss something early and then have to try to come back for it, and it, it's not good. So I think a lot of people full clear almost everything when they know there are still loose items. And so, if you find one of the loose items in an obscure place, that tells you that your opponent is going to be full clearing one thing after another looking for the thing you found. So that gives you even more time to, to be patient and uh, do it right. Question from chat as Zardia helping us out with tracking along with Lyra notes the third ribbon has been found. One of them was incentivized. We're going to find a white shirt in just a moment on your screen for Shadow Walker as well. But Meridian is noticing, or is asking, are there guaranteed to be two loose items? There is. Should an NPC give a cabin? There will be three. Yes, and if uh, one of the ribbons is a loose item, it sort of becomes indistinguishable with the other ribbons. So you could argue that it doesn't count anymore, but that's, yeah, you're splitting hairs at that point. Yeah, there should be at least, as Will says, two loose items, uh, three if the item placement puts something there that uh, ends up turning into a cabin. And, and uh, that's, yeah. And not necessarily required. Not necessarily. Right, right. Although highly likely. Meanwhile, Moist Mogwai makes her way all the way through the Earth's cave, Fort clears it, it's going to pay off with the floater, does not exit, which we questioned, what, what would we do? She just took out her first fiend. She's got an orb lit. One hour, we'll call it six minutes. Moist Mogwai won. Shadow Walker 2270. And more than just the orb lit, she's got a magical floating rock. And that is going to blow the doors off this one once she starts uh, sailing the clouds instead of the seas. Do you really sail the clouds, though? Do, do you float? Do, do you and do you sashay the clouds? I don't... Sailing is more about swagger than any sort of, you know, uh -huh. physical interaction. If you're a man of the sea, then you can be a man of the sky or whatever of the whatever but the point is it's it's about the attitude and i think she's got the attitude now there's going to be about 30 minutes from now when we hit just past the 90 minute mark i think where moist mogwai is going to be looking over at the race room and she's not going to be seeing dot done she's going to be expecting it and then some more minutes are going to pass and then i think and i would predict that it's going to hit her she might win this. And does she kick it into gear? But there's one huge question mark going on. It's been pointing out right now in chat by Ikbin Maya. That chime is loose. It's the other item, and it's incredibly accessible. 
that was already skipped. How long before you start going back over and retracing your tracks might be the question of this match if Moist, if Moist Mogwai can put it away. Moist Mogwai sailing the high seas, as is the theme here in the 2019 Spring Tournament. Uh, working on her map, trying to remember exactly where things are, of course. We got a, we're gonna have a map check coming up uh, from Moist Mogwai. Something that she does uh, every now and then, trying to remember. Like I said, most of her, most of her work is behind the scenes in leadership in the Final Fantasy Random as a community. It isn't with the controller in the hand. It isn't. It's behind the scenes. It's writing things. It's taking care of all these little things. But she wanted to play, and she joined just recently. She's on her way right now to the Ryukon Desert, right around the one hour, we'll call it 10 minute mark. And she's gonna be the first player in the air here in this first match of the 2019 Final Fantasy Randomizer Spring Tournament. Time for a little... Elfland shopping. Let's probably going to do a little bit of shopping. Now that she's in the air, the tail is accessible. She knows where it is. The tail yeah. is the vendor items in the caravan. She's got enough for it now, too, too. We have to thank the crowd here for starting to file. And we got a lively crowd here. We're on Lord Fizzlebeast's channel. Great guy put this together. Nitz, he kind of called us up and yes. told us we were doing commentary. I... It was he great. took my Friday <laughs> evening out back and shot it in the <laughs> But hey, we're partying now. This is... I was this close to going to bed and actually catching up on some sleep, but no time for that. There's nothing no hard time to play. There's Final Fantasy Randomizer to go. Meanwhile, Shadowwalker227 has made his way to carry the Fiend of Fire. He's going to use a couple nukes. He's going to take down the Fiend of Fire. We are tied. One orb apiece. All right. Now, what next if you're Shadow Walker? Did he see it in his menu yet? We're gonna find out. Gaia is Gaia. And well, that's the bottle. Tastes like schnozberries. Yes, we got the bottle. We got the waterfall left. And, uh, you know, missing item. You know, the slab and the cube and the loot. The slab will lead to one or the other. Uh, excuse me, the slab will lead to either the cube or the loot. The other will be located in a waterfall. We'll see what a tiny fairy gives us here coming up shortly. I would think it's either that, uh, that loot, or, uh, what'd I just say? Slab. <laughs> it's slab. Yeah, it could be. And the cube. I believe Adamant is also in there somewhere as well. Cube. Thank you, Cube. So much to do. Now, she doesn't have the charm yet, because she doesn't have the Mystic Key yet, because she hasn't been to the Ice Cave yet. So that might happen. That'll all kind of flow out, probably in sequence, when she gets around to it. In the meantime, she could pillage all the Cardi Isles, she could hit the waterfalls, she could go by the tail. That's what's up. The tail goes nice with the uh, Cardi Isles pillage. I don't know. Do you, uh, do you loot all the chests? That? Look at this. Look, don't look at the look Shadow now. Walker. The, the moment is clicked. Okay. Uh, do you... <laughs> He's okay. probably not too pleased about um, that. Uh, I'm trying to put myself in Shadow Walker's position. I, I've been in it before, and I, I can only think, oh shoot. You know what? I gotta step on this. And I gotta think I go to, like, incentive locations first. Which is not where he needs to go. I'm thinking waterfall. I'm thinking ordeals here, Nitz. Yeah, and it's gonna push him further and further away. Frankly, I, I, I mean, I, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but he is really, really doomed. <laughs> Does he... Did he turn in the crown to get the rod yet, either? Because if he doesn't have the rod, he's not no. gonna go to the Earth Cave. No, he didn't. <laughs> yeah. we, we haven't... We haven't seen that thing yet. <laughs> Rod Schmad. 
One hour, 12 minutes. Shadow Walker has left the inner sea. That's good. He's going he's to head directly to Waterfall and Castle or Dale. So, he's going to follow the path that Moist Mogwai did 40 minutes ago. While Moist Mogwai enters the incentivized Waterfall location, we believe this will either be the Adamant or the Slab. Which will lead to each other, which will eventually lead to the required loot. Three ribbons for Shadow Walker is his advantage, along with that loose chime that we believe is the reverse that Moist Mogwai isn't going to find anytime soon. How about that YouTube show the other day, Nets? Wasn't that great working together? Yeah, so... Oh, for... loved it. That's, uh, that's very interesting. But, uh, if you're out of the loop, for the first time ever, we, uh, Trenton choreographed a direct-to-YouTube stream as opposed to, um, Twitch for interested parties. And, um... Without going into too much detail about it, it's just another avenue to, uh, to spread FFR. So if that kind of thing is interesting to you, um, keep your, uh, keep your ears to the ground for uh, future updates. Moist Mogwai making your way through the incentivized waterfall. When she gets there, Nitz will let you know what it is that she finds. We believe it to be either the slab or the adamant. We're going to find yeah. out very soon. Meanwhile, Shadow Walker 227 is maneuvering through Castle of Ordeal. We know all he's going to find here is a ruby and the incentivized chest and a Thor's hammer. Yeah, Lyra pointing out in chat, Shadow Walker's only hope is to find the ruby, decide to cash it in, and then make the same observation that, uh, that Mogwai said. And, well, I'm here. I don't know where the floater is. I've checked a lot of stuff. Might as well clear out Earth, because otherwise I'm just going to sail back anyway, because I don't know where to yeah. go next. And uh, in yeah. his case, that is probably not going to happen, because that's, no. I think, the last thing you do when you're, um, when you're chasing is to crawl through the Earth Cave nice and slow. Could happen, but I don't expect it. Is there an upset brewing on Day Zero of the 2019 Spring Tournament? Day Zero! We're just minutes away, at least here over here in the Eastern Time Zone. Nitz, maybe you're there. You're right now of entering Day One, but... What is that? What was that? It was a thing that I was looking at the other screen. Lyra. Adamant. It was Adamant. Adamant. Uses the exit spell, gets out of there. Yeah. And the Adamant should almost certainly lead to the slab, which should almost certainly lead to the loot. We believe that to be the case. If you're wondering, does everything always have to be used up, or can there be, like, cut-off dead ends? Like, could you just get the loot and there is no slab or something? The answer is uh, not the way it's set up. Everything will always be used up nice and elegantly, so every fetch quest is finished and every NPC is involved somehow. So the length of the fetch quest can change, and what you always get at the end can change, but every single item is a part of the journey. Shadow Walker continues his quest through Castle Ordeal. He's in better shape than Moist Mogwai was to get through here. He's going to get through probably with no problem. As Moist Mogwai is leaving the on -ra the original on-rack and waterfall location, she's going to go to the vendor item. She's going to buy the tail, Nitz. I like this play. Yeah, I, uh... If she's cautiously optimistic... With the way she found the floater, she might believe herself to be in a bit of a lead. It wouldn't be a stretch to guess that, even if you were not, like, burning it up up to that moment, when you find the loose floater in Earth in a chest that people often skip, you've got to feel pretty good about your chances. So now, more than ever, just, like, avoid mistakes, level up your party, take it easy, 
and uh, don't heap too much pressure on yourself. And I think that's what she's doing, just excellent, calm decision making. Shadow Walker still not making use of that exit spell. He's gonna head towards the original Onrak in the waterfall area. This is classic routing from Shadow Walker. Uh, I think he felt it when he got that ship. So he's gonna go and he's gonna do all these sections together as best that he can. When you go to the waterfall, automatically you think, as Moist Mogwai, she's got it. Moist Mogwai picks up her preferred end game weapon. It's the Vorpal. <laughs> <laughs> she's picked game it up. Changer. Hasn't equipped it yet. Can't, I of course. Can't. I forgot. I forgot what I was saying. I got so excited. <laughs> When you go to the waterfall, you your natural instinct and what you think is, if I'm going to waterfall, I don't want to walk out of there. Do I have warp or exit? I've got to think that this leads Shadow Walker to look at his spells and see that he can get out of there faster. And maybe that can change the tide just a little bit. Shadow Walker has in his back pocket three ribbons and that loose chime that is very elusive. And another defense, well, not another, pardon me, but the first defense, another promotion weapon for Moist Mogwai. Defense casts, of course, Ruse on the user. Excellent sword. And uh, she'll slot that right up on the fighter. Anything interesting so far? Yeah, I chat? was just going there. Question from Magius in I... chat. Anything... Yes. <laughs> it's um... a long answer, Magius, but this has been an incredible Sail the Seas journey. And, um... And... We have an upset brewing. I, I, I think I feel comfortable saying that. Right now, Moist Mogwai is in a, a commanding lead. Other than what we just talked about with the loose chime and the three ribbons against our opponent Shadow Walker. Yeah, the big story in this seed is uh, Shadow Walker just neglected the first two fetch quest items he received from the king and the princess. He got the crown and the herb, and it took him over an hour, I think, to, to cash in either one. And even though both of the castles to cash those in are actually fairly close to the start of the game. So that was just a big mistake, and uh, it let uh, Mogwai carve out such a big lead that uh, she's really coasting now. She's got the airship, which she uh, found on a dive that was sort of on a whim while she was near Sarda returning the ruby, and it's really been going her way since then. You know what? It's, I'm, I'm watching Moist Mogwai's stream it very in closely here, and I, I feel... Uh, I don't know how to explain this other than using the terminology. I feel a rhythm. I, I, I feel like... Okay, I'm in yeah, this. I'm yeah. starting to. I see where this is going, and I can. I can feel, uh, you know, like a, like a tugboat, here in northern yeah, she's Michigan. Got a plan. We, you know what I mean? You, you can yeah. feel it. Yeah, she has an absolute plan, and she's sticking to the script. And I think that's an excellent way to avoid making mistakes and poor decisions. Like, if you have a plan, then it makes the decisions for you, and that's what I'm kind of seeing here. Yeah, she cleaned through the cardi aisle. Some people would say, is that a waste of time? What are you looking for? In her case, there's still a loose item. She doesn't know that the chime is in the Temple of Fiend, so it's perfectly rational to just casually comb through cardi at this point. And, uh... Plan's looking good. Yeah, Moist Mogwai, she's gonna head back to, I believe this is the new Gaia. There's gold bracelets for sale here. Upping the armor, and this is what I was talking about. You can feel the, you know, the, that tugboat, you know, in the in the Great Lakes. You need something to get you going, because you, you're, you're, and once you get going, then you're just you're just a, a machine. And I feel that going for Moist Mogwai. She's got a commanding lead, playing very well. Question is, it's that loose chime. That son of a gun is required. Can she find that? We know that Ice Cave is an incentivized location. I gotta think that that's where she goes next. A little bit of level 7 white magic. In there's two there. Actually, uh, not horrible, but... 
note takers. Shadow Walker has made his way through the waterfall. He picks up his adamant. Does he use the exit spell? <laughs> he does not. Shadow Walker is going to walk back out of the it's waterfall. Like a walk of shame. Runs into some unrunnable mud goals. That's just adding insult to injury. Moist Mogwai does a, another map check. For those of you late night here, the day zero, day one, I don't know. It depends on what time zone you're in of the spring tournament. Uh, drink up, because it is a map check. Thank you, Moist Mogwai. As predicted, Moist Mogwai now goes toward the ice cave. She's entered the incentivized ice cave. We know that the mystic key is located in here. Required item. Could lead her on a little bit of a wild goose chase for a potential second loose item. But still, it's it's a good play and it's a required play. Yeah, this could bode well. Ah, uh, she reset out of that one. Not feeling it, but... With, uh, with exit now, it shouldn't be so bad. We've got a lot of enemies with Cremate, but her party is so much stronger than Shadows was when he was here that, uh, shouldn't be too bad. Having said that, she's already had to reset it once. Yeah, Cremate was on, uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, the Arhydras and the Chimeras in the original game, if I'm remembering correctly. So, it, that could, we've seen that on a few different enemies already. Uh, Nitz, you know so much about this game, all the work that you've done. Will you tell the fans a little bit about what we call the Medusa script? What is it, and how did it become the Medusa script? Yeah, that's um, an interesting story of how enemy AI works. So, all the enemies in Final Fantasy 1 have a script, and that script says what the percentage chances they have of attacking, of using one of their skills, and they'll have a, and some scripts have a list of skills in, that they will be, that they will use in order if they use a skill, and then it will loop through and they'll use their scripts in order. And um, then whether or not they use a spell, and their spells are the same spells that uh, the party has access to, and they will cast the next spell in order, and when they're out of spells, they'll loop back to the beginning if they roll a spell. So the script dictates the percentage chances of doing each of those things and which skills and spells they have access to. Now, if those are shuffled, different enemies are given different scripts, but there's more enemies than scripts, so they share scripts, in other words. And so the Medusa script happens to be shared by three enemies, including the Medusa. And so that's where it gets its name. But if the Medusa script gets shuffled to have a spell like Nuke on it, that means three different enemies will have that script, and so three different enemies will have the nuke spell, even though there's only one nuke in the spell pool. So that's what the Medusa script is. It's the most common script in that three enemies have it. So if it has particularly nasty skills or spells on it, that can be bad news. We think that Moist Mogwai, actually yes, she is. She's at the key item boost. What we've got here in the tournament is 150% experience from the base on top of a 2.0 boost. Uh, if she gets 12 key items or more, she gets more experience. She's there. I believe Shadow Walker is close. He did just buy the tail as he checked out the caravan and that where Shadow Walker goes next is pivotal. We're gonna follow him and take a look at him as he's sailing the high seas. Meanwhile, Moist Mogwai, our leader right now. Moist Mogwai is leading Shadow Walker 227 as we near the 90 minute mark. And it is a clear leader. As Moist Mogwai continues, she has to check the entire ice cave. She does not have the second loose item. It is the chime. Her opponent, Shadow Walker, does have it. Nearly 50 players in this tournament. We've got some of Magius is joining us in chat. He was in the first tournament. We've got a bunch of the Shofukamachi, Zardia, the the original winner, Crystal MTG. They're all in this tournament. Then there was the second wave of players. 
Hangry Canuck, Falconic FFs, Arson Horse. They're in this tournament. And then we got some new players as well. Shadow Walker 227, his first tournament. We got Gouda in this as well. Dangwu. Spell Zap. A real player right there. He's in this tournament as well. Shadow Walker 227 has made his way towards the original Melmond area. He's doing the right thing. He's taking that ruby. They got a castle ordeal. And he's headed towards Sarda. What he does next is pivotal for Shadow Walker's game. We know he'll get the Sarda item. And does he do the Earth Cave? He does not have the rod. He still has not turned in the crown. So we'll keep a close eye on that as Moist Mogwai closing in on finishing up the Ice Cave. Yeah, and we've talked a lot about the uh, like underdog status of Moist Mogwai going into this race. And while that may be true, I think it's not... Like, that's why they race the race, you know? Any given Sunday and all that. It's one thing to say, oh, this person's better, they should win. Well, hang on a minute. <laughs> if it were that simple, yeah. why even bother with the tournament, right? And yeah, what that's why they Moist Mogwai has done, put together an excellent race, like, very disciplined. And um, Shadow Walker just hasn't been there to match it, and that's why she's got such a big lead now, and it's uh, looking really good in our opening match here. Yeah, Mama Duck taking control of one of her formal... <laughs> former Ducklings. Shadow Walker is one of the top original Ducklings in Moist Mogwai. Showing how it's done, playing so well, so even, so, you know, to the slow script. and steady state. Very yeah. well done. To the script. I think that having a plan is an excellent thing to do to help calm nerves and help avoid, um, you know, just just that uncertainty of uh, poor decision making of, of snap decisions and stuff once you're in the zone maybe you let the plan go maybe you you see something you want to do something unusual but when you don't have those gut instincts where you're out of practice or you're um not accustomed to racing have a plan and stick to it and that seems to be working great Take a moment to acknowledge Moist Mogwai's names of her light warriors. Uh, she's got Danny as her red mage. That's uh, Danielle, one of our trackers, and does a whole bunch of things behind the scenes as well. She'll be helping out tomorrow. Coming up, we'll let you know about that match coming up. The white mage, of course, named Mary. That's Meridian, Meridian BC. Nitz, you work with Meridian so much, and uh, wow, does he help out the community so much. Uh, Falconic is her black mage, and uh, her leader of her light warrior party. His name's Will. <laughs> On the other side, I think we've got uh, a bit of a movie reference there. It's been a long time since I've seen it, but from Bill and Ted, I'm going to extrapolate. <laughs> Bill and Ted? Uh, Shadow Walker having an excellent adventure, certainly. Oh my goodness, yes. But worth note, uh, Shadow Walker took a good look at his menu and realized that he's got the crown. He's turned that in. That means he's got his rod. And he's double checking, he's double checking the uh, Keylock chest in Northwest Castle. He finds out that he's done that already. He's gonna head to, uh, I think he's gonna go to Dwarf Cave next, I would certainly think, and check that concentration chest there. We'd like to remind you that tomorrow, uh, day one, <laughs> Saturday, uh, April 6th, of the uh, day one of the 2019 Final Fantasy Ransom Spring Tournament, one of the matches I'm looking forward to the most, it's our restreamer, Lord Fizzlebeef is going to take on the Enforcer of Team Vorpal, Falconic FF, it's going to be Knockdown Dragout, and it's going to be awesome. It's going to go on at 11 p.m. Eastern Time. That's 8 p.m. Pacific Time. It's going to be on the Speed Gaming family of networks. And it will be brought to you by... The returning Team Illuminati is going to call that match, Nets. Mm. Get your pitchforks. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have a burn burning. Shadow Walker turns in his found adamant and picks up his slab. Moist Mogwai is going back through the... Now that she has the Mystic Key, she's checking the Mystic Key chest. Pivotal moment for Moist Mogwai. 
does she go to the Temple of Fiends? Okay, she, she wants to, you know, she's not doing it. And there we are. Get all the trusty Temple Fiends, get the Mystic Key, might as well clean it out. And while you're here, you might as well clean the whole thing out. There we go, gonna find that second loose item more than likely. Question in chat from Gregly Puff. Uh, was already answered by our tracker Lyra, always on top of it. During the adamant gave the slab. Moist Mogwai is going to the Temple of Fiends. Moist Mogwai is going to find the chime nits. That's right. No, that's, uh, that's just about it. We're, we're getting close to, like, time to ring the gong here. Shadow Walker is going to the Earth Cave. Business just picked up. Moist Mogwai's gonna find the second loose item, and she is going to enter go mode. Left side of your screen, right side of your screen, Shadow Walker 227 has struggled the entire match, but he is in the right area, and he is going to pick up his floater if he continues through this, which we think he will. Your heart rate just starts to go. You know Moist Mogwai is looking at the race channel, Oh, uh, when is Shadow Walker done? When is Shadow Walker done? I don't know. Shadow Walker is on pins and needles, Nits. He knows he missed a couple things. And he's got to be like, okay, you know what? I better get serious here, and I you better know, do it now. You know, it's so funny because at first we're like, why the heck? It's such an obscure thing. But, like, when you're chasing, one of the things you got to do is try and do something unusual and maybe get lucky. Like, find a floater in the Earth Cave that your opponent has forgotten. Now, in his case, Mogwai's already got the floater from the Earth Cave, but if that's like his angle, like he's doing something unusual in the hopes of catching up, it's going to work here. He's got to keep this chest checking up, he's got to do it on the next floor, and he's got to find the floater. That might lull him into a false sense of, I've got a shot. Like, she might not have done this yet, I can actually catch up. And we know she has, but at least it puts him in good stead to, uh, to give her a run for it if she runs into some trouble later on. Once again, we'd like to thank the, the crowd just keeps growing, Nits. We've got crab yeah. cakes in the crowd as well. So That's an excellent showing for a private show. airing of, yeah, like five minutes notice, and here we are. So thanks, everyone, for coming out. <laughs> I, uh, it livened up my Friday. I put the kids to bed. I got the... Uh, that is going to call a race. It has been a great match so far. Moist Mogwai has led... Gosh, the entire way, it's varied. I, as long as, if I was to guess 20 minutes, based upon the path that her opponent Shadow Walker is on right now, that has diminished. Hooray! Pointed out by Ali Jerbrap in chat, Moist Mogwai has not been to the Marsh Cave incentivized ribbon there. Moist Mogwai has no ribbons at all. Yeah, that's I I know there's ideal. one in the volcano. Loose. I, I forget where the other ones were. Zar, I know you pointed out that there were three of them if you could let us know. Uh, question, uh, one fine day in chat, and it's... Uh, he's asking, what happened? What? What, happened? What, what didn't happen is more of the question. Um... It, it comes down to a yeah. early divergence in pathing, because the king and the princess gave away the herb and the crown. And what Moist Mogwai did was return those things as soon as she could, which got her the ship and sent her on an adventure, where she went sailing around to the obscure places, because the canoe was also very early, it was received from the Provoke Actors. What Shadow Walker did was neglect to return those things. So when he got his canoe, he went to the Crescent Lake entrance, he went to the Volcano entrance, he went to the Ice Cave entrance, and got different progression that led him in a different direction. But he finally did get around to getting his hands on the ship, and now he's in the Earth Cave about to get a loose floater, because he probably sees himself as quite behind, so he's doing some obscure stuff and checking out Earth Cave loose chests, and he's going to find the floater in the very next one if he keeps it up. And, uh... That's how we got to where we are. Mogwai's got the huge lead right now, but it can all change if she starts wiping somewhere along the line. He's got his floater. Yeah, the uh, 
And you know what's really happening here on, again, day zero of the 2019 Spring Tournament? As Shadow Walker's gonna find his floater very quickly. It's coming up right here. The, the design of the flag set nets, this was the idea. Diverging paths, decision making. What do you do? What weapons do you have? What spells do you have? What is it that's available to you? What do you do and why? Do you want to gamble? You want to gamble? Oh, I, I, I'm Moist Mogwai. I'm going to dive Earth Cave and I'm going to clear it and it paid off. It wasn't early, but it was early enough to establish a lead. And it's a real testament definitely to the flag set of what we have here. It's been tested, been tested extensively. Believe me, I can tell you it has. And uh, very well done from the tournament design. It's the Tristal NTG. Tyranex was involved with that. Ben Maya was involved. At Triton GL, everything that he did. And a very great design that's going to create a whole ton of competitive matches like we have right here and right now. A, p a potential upset. As Moist Mogwai continues to lead, she's led the entire way. She's going to check the armory now in the volcano. We know that yep. in a floor a little bit later, I believe that's where the ribbon is. That would give her her first ribbon if she continues to check chess. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that she's going to stop, probably be satisfied with one ribbon given the way things are. At some point, all this chess checking really does take a huge drain on your time. So you, you got to weigh that and you got to decide how much time you want to invest into it. I mean. um, especially because you know one of them's incentivized and you haven't been to Marsh, so... It could be down there, and, and indeed it is. But she hasn't, um, hasn't... Did she return the adamant and translate the... Get the slab and translate that? Has, has that happened yet? Uh, she has, she has the slab. Yeah. But my understanding is that it has not been translated yet yeah. with Lyra yeah. and Zardia on the tracking. I know I know they're correct. We can trust our tracker. Yeah, so, um... And that will lead to the loot. The last yeah. required item. You can look at the bottom of the screen. What a tracker we've got here. Yeah, the, uh, um... Borrowed from Randomania. Uh, you're on Lord Fizzlebeast, man. Yeah, uh, straight. The other side of the coin is that, you know, Fizzlebeast is, has, is no longer checking chess. He's flying through now because he hit, he's found his two loose items. He knows he's, you know, in some form of go mode or other, depending what you want to call it. He's found all the loose items anyway. So, um... He's just going to put the pedal to the metal now and, and try to put some pressure from behind. And uh, if he gets a good head of steam, he can do that. Especially if Moist Mogwai t continues to uh, do this like slow and steady strategy. It will let somebody catch up. That's okay. That's part of the plan. It's just she's going to have those extra levels and, and just got to hope that you hang on. That's, I think, the way she's the angle she's taking here. One hour, 40 minutes. If we look towards the end game. And we just referenced the tracker. Left side of your screen, Moist Mogwai has something lit up called the Game Changer. Moist Mogwai has a lot of experience using that weapon to finish this game and do it. If you look right under the Game Changer, you see something called the Power Gauntlet. You put those two together with someone that can use that and someone that believes in the Vorpal Sword. There you go, she's got one. Chad pointed out, you know, if Mo Got wants like another it. ribbon, well, she knows there's one in the last incentive location in Marsh, and I hesitate to use language like that. We certainly know that there's one in the incentive location in Marsh, and also you can intuit that there's only one left and it has to be there. But it's one thing to make that observation from the comfort of your own chair. It's quite another to suddenly remember that at, at full speed while you're playing the opening race of the tournament. So. You know, it's not so simple as, oh, she can just go grab one. Like, that's a that's a leap to all of a sudden take yourself out of what you're doing and be like, oh, yeah, there's only one thing left that I haven't been. It's got to be a ribbon because I haven't found one. Like, that's a lot to, to suggest that someone can just remember like that. So be careful of using language like that. So if we take a look at our leader, Moist Mogwai's screen, Aegis Shield, Dragon Armor, two ribbons. She's going to continue, it looks like, to check chess. Power Gauntlet. Is she ready to make her move? Meanwhile, Shadow Walker 227 has his floater. One hour, 40, just past that mark. He's going to head towards the Ryukon Desert. That's where Moist Mogwai was almost an hour ago. Can Shadow Walker close this gap? 
Uh, mm -hmm. question, uh, from, uh, Fuchs. Do they have temper? Uh, Nitz, I have not seen temper. Have you? I do not believe that we have seen temper. No, I'm oh. guessing it's high level. It's probably only that... one of the level 7 or 8 shops they haven't been right. into yet. We know that Life 2 was Red Mage. Learnable. Level 5. First slot. Warp class change locked. Meanwhile, Moist Mogwai makes her way to carry the Fiend of Fire, trying to light her second orb. She's gonna use her spells and more than likely take out carry very quickly as Shadow Walker enters the air. We got Shadow Walker entering the air, we'll call it 1 hour 42 minutes. It may be late to the airplane game, but he is basically not checking chess anymore now that he's found his loose items and has plenty of ribbons. He's stepping on he it. Can, he can, yeah, he can fly. Moist Mogwai has taken out her second fiend. She's lit her second orb. We are tied. Two orbs to two orbs. The gap starting to close. Just a little bit. You can feel Shadow Walker nervous. And he wants to play his game. And I can tell you what. I can tell you right now, Shadow Walker 227 can play this game. You know what? He's in the Highlander tournament, too, as well. He's made it through the first two rounds. I believe he's in, like, the final eight, if I'm not mistaken, in the Highlander tournament. He's playing that game, too, and having a lot of success over there. So, yes, it's fair to say that perhaps he should have been the favorite tonight, but maybe perhaps one too many FFR races, you know? Melts the brain. Well, uh, I'd love to talk after and just see where, where he was at with that. Moist Mogwai's doing a little bit of cleanup, picking picking up some spells. We know that Life 2, checking Life the menu. Life Pure 4, at, yeah, four. At level 2 there. Finally getting picked up. I think that was just being dangled in front of them for a long time, but uh, adding Life and Cure 4 to the arsenal really amps up your White Magic game. They're both level 2, so the Red Mage and the White Mage should be nicely stocked up. Even That's what night. Moist Mogwai's doing. She's preparing for the end game. Nitz, I, uh, we know each other fairly well. Shadow Walker's... He's got his thing going now. His tugboat has taken off. And you can feel him gaining momentum. He's doing the little things right now. The way he canoed around the corners of that river to have four less encounter tiles. I assume he's translated the slab. <laughs> Before, or he, uh... <laughs> Well, because uh, we've been to no, every other town. No, of course he hasn't. I was starting to wonder. I'm like, he's doing the little things right. And then I was like, wait, why the heck is he going to LeFay? No. Uh, <laughs> a little point of reference right. for, for new wrong. players. Uh, we just saw Shadow Walker's inventory. The slab is in his inventory at this point in time. We can tell that he has not translated his slab because it's in his inventory. Yes. And Shadow Walker realizes that. Resets. He's going to the Mirage Tower. He yeah, knows what's going on. Yeah, yeah he yeah, knows that leads to the loot. He's going for his third orb. Yeah, full speed ahead. Nice thing about the Mirage Tower, if you can survive it, and his party is just on the cusp where he can, is that there's lots of good EXP to be had here, especially, like, this fight. So, uh, he's just gonna be choosy, gain a few levels on the way up, try to get into the 20s, or as close to them as he can. Nitz, uh, Zar, Lyra. What does Shadow Walker have for a weapon on this fighter? Is that the Sun Sword? That's the Sun Sword, okay. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, <laughs> he's scraping bottom with that thing, but, uh... I wanted to keep a close eye on right side of your screen, Shadow Walker. I think he's done. Completely done checking chest power gauntlet. I, he might go with the Sun Sword. We know Moist Mogwai's gonna go with the Warple. I mean, who wouldn't? But... <laughs> Moist Mogwai, uh, we'll see where she goes next. Is it the Sea Shrine for her third orb, or is it the Mirage Tower and Tiamat in her third orb? Now, I know that, uh, returning the bottle got you the cube. Has he done that yet? Yes, he has. Okay, good. Sigh of relief there for Shadow Walker. Moist 
multiple other races have actually already started and finished and finished uh, I don't know I don't Ali Jabrak them. was racing against uh, one fine day as a matter of fact I believe so wow they didn't have this match <laughs> they didn't have the loose floater in earth oh, yeah you know, the the actual item placement never ceases to amaze me. One minute you get a jet seat where the king hands you the floater and the princess hands you the canoe, and it's just like, <laughs> go have fun. And then the next seat, you get the floater loose in the earth cave. Almost rod-locked. <laughs> We'd like to thank the defending champion, Edgeworth, for the host of this match right now. Oh, We've right got a on. barn burner. Thank That's you very awesome. much. Thanks for bringing the group. Uh, welcome you to this just marathon match. Uh, I don't need to say too much more than loose floater in Earth Cave. Yeah. Uh, and and wolves, regular old garden variety wolves at the start with frost to just kind of, you know, take the edge off as you're just getting repeatedly murdered in the opening forests. So um, it has been a very interesting divergent match. Uh, the king and princess, most importantly, gave away the herb and the crown, which are fetch items that can be returned really early on. And uh, that's exactly what Mogwai did, and it's exactly what Shadow Walker did not do, and now he has to fight a war mech. But he ran away from it. He passed. He's gonna pass on the war mech. Shadow Walker's really going for it. He's closing in very quickly on his third orb. It's on Moist Mogwai. Can she step on the gas? What is it that she's going to do? Does she feel comfortable with her two ribbons? The Vorpal? Oh, the yeah. Game she's, Changer? She's got uh, Kraken on the mind now. She's just shot through this red, toasty, golden sea shrine. I like the uh, Melmond entrance for uh, the color scheme. That's uh, one of those uh, floor shuffle features. When the floors get, sh uh, when entrances of any sort get shuffled around, it retints them. Even just town shuffle does that. So, whichever town happens to have um, the sea shrine, whichever one is on rack, it'll have a slightly different color depending on where it ends up. Moist Mogwai is done checking chest. She's on her way. She steps away. She's closing in on Crack and Delight her third orb. Shadow Walker is closing in on Team at Delight his third orb. Shadow Walker has made up... 20 minutes? Tons nits? 20? Well, it's the, it's the airship, man. It's like the it's like the biathlon. Once you get on the bike, you go a lot faster. So the first person to get on the bike has to make, make good with that time, because it gets squandered quickly. But having said that, they're both about to clear uh, a fiend dungeon. The one thing behind would be... Shadow Walker, he's got to translate the slab and still turn it in. Moist Mogwai just has to turn it in. Then they'll have to flip-flop the, the exact dungeons that they're in right now. Shadow, Shadow Walker, Walker. Yeah, also, he has, I think he has less levels. He's not promoted. And uh, he has an absolute garbage weapon. Not, not absolute garbage. I take that back. The Sun Sword is like the third best sword. But it is a cut below. <laughs> the... The, um... The Mass Moon, Excalibur, and, and you know what? As far as critical hits go, even the Vorpal has its uses. I'm willing to concede that. But the Sun Sword, that, that, that's just kind of like a butter knife. You need to, like, <laughs> you, know, you need to saber up. You need to fast yourself up. You're going to kill a, a promoted fiend with that thing. We had a match last year in the first round. Uh, one fine day, I know you're here with us. It was your match where you could only find the ice sword. If you could let us know in chat, please. Um, who it was that you were playing? Was it Drumbordist or Split Punched? I think one of those two. And both players couldn't find anything better than the ice sword, and both players went to the end. And both players, uh, elite players, was Split was split Punched. Uh, both players, elite, no question at all. It was certainly in my opinion. And they were able to get the job done. I will not do that. It's and you know I play this game too. I won't do that. I also will not do it with the Sun Sword. It's just it's just how I feel. I want you know um, the legendary Excalibur. I want the versatile Mazmoon or certainly the Crit Machine, uh, the Game Changer. I want one of those three, and I'm not going without one of them. But Shadow Walker can do it. He's got the Power Gauntlet. He's got nukes. I do I think, believe he can get it done. I think he feels pretty much rightly so that he is chasing. And um, he's actually chasing more successfully than he probably thinks he is. Like, 
this match is tightening right up. Besides the fact that he's unpromoted, and that he doesn't have as good of a sword, he actually has more ribbons. So, like, you know, it, it's not so simple. Like, if you said, Mike, who are you betting on? I, uh, I would say, first of all, my name is Nitz. Stop calling me Mike. And then I would say, I don't know yet. I can't pick a winner yet. And, you know, if you asked me the same question 20 minutes ago, I would have had an answer for you. So that's why this got so interesting so fast. I'm wondering... Because Shadow Walker has the tail. He bought it. I believe that his head is on straight enough now to know that he has it. Harsh. I, and I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know I, about that. I, I... Okay. I don't... I he's think he's actually of skipping gun. class change. He's got, like, a storage unit in Melmond, just full of crap. He's like, what is there? Is there a crown in there? We gotta, he's, like, rummaging through. They got, like, Storage Wars Melmond Edition, where someone's like, oh, look at that brass <laughs> tail. What the heck is, what is that, right? He doesn't even know he's got it, man. Hosted, Storage Wars Melmond Edition, hosted by Meridian BC, <laughs> straight out of Canada. Uh, yeah. Here, take this loot. All right. Shadow Walker 227 on his way to the original Lafayne location. We know that that is still Lafayne, even though it's shuffled. He's going to pick up his loot right behind him on her way to the original Lafayne location. To pick up her loot is Moist Mogwai. Look at that. This is much closer than uh, a lot of people thought it would have been, myself included. Great match, great way to kick off 2019 Final Fantasy Randomizer Spring Tournament, just like we did it last year. There it is. There it is. See, the now loot. that's, that's ballin'. $56,000 level 8 temper, and it might actually come into play. I don't know if that Black Wizard has any charges yet, and if they're gonna get high enough level, but if you even have a single one, it can it can make a difference against Chaos, t What is a, what is a char- is it 24 for a hit a level 8? That sounds right, but honestly, it's been a long time since I've had one. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's been a long time, not, yeah. Okay. Not a charge, but an actual level 25. 8 spell. There you go. There's people that know what they're talking about, helping us out. Appreciate that, Carb Cakes. Allie, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Allie. I don't know, I just work here, man. <laughs> Moist Mogwai has passed Shadow Walker. On the track to the original of fame, Moist Mogwai is on her way to the Mirage Tower and eventually using the cube to get to the Floating Fortress. Shadow Walker has made it to his airship. He's on his way to the Shuffled On Rack to try to light his fourth <laughs> orb. It's anybody's game, Nitz. I love the beauty of the town shuffle. Now he's like, where the heck is On Rack anyway? So he's like flying around. One minute you're like, what does town shuffle even do? Isn't it just an inconvenience? A little bit. But it makes you play that game of paying attention to where things are and how to get around. And, and Shadow Walker is, at this point in the game, much better at it than he was at the start. Yeah. Both players are in go mode. Both players are done checking chess. Except Shadow Walker, because he can't remember where On Rack was. Welcome to I mean, Town Shuffle. On Rack is one of those places that you don't want to go back. You know, you're like, I went there for like a weekend or whatever. They got the sea shrine. They take you down in a submarine and they show you all this old crap. And then you have like some really bad fish and chips and you get out and you never come back. And that's, that's, fish exactly, and that's what he's doing right now. That thing Voice is Mogwai said. is the first to enter the final dungeon. Shadow Walker uh, uh, dirtled around. Lord Fizzleby. And Moist Mogwai regains the lead. This is anyone's match right Absolutely here. Absolutely awesome race. No question. We are nearing the two hour mark. This is going to be a post two hour seat. Shadow Walker is checking chests. He wants a sword, man. Like He wants a sword. Okay. It, it, you, you, you flip the sun sword upside down and hit him with the handle and it's just as good. At some point you're like, you know what, I need something a little sharper. I like the sun sword when I was a kid, it was one of my favorites because I love red mages and that's like the best thing they can equip, right? But um, as, a, as a grown man, I'm like, you know what, this thing is might as well be made out of wood. Shadow Walker's checking of chests opens the door and gives the lead back to Moist Mogwai. This is still either player's game as we near the two-hour mark. 
We saw the other day that the YouTube exclusive stream, Nitz, me and you both called it. It was a great match between the defending champion Edgeworth and the bus saw Manochi 85. Edgeworth finished at 93 minutes. Completely different C, completely different everything. That's what we're going to see all tournament long in the 2019 tournament, and I love it. Yeah, these, these uh, I think a lot was learned from last one's, um, s excuse me, the Swiss flags we had from the last tournament. I think they were an excellent introduction to Final Fantasy Randomizer, but they got played so much that by the end, everybody was semi-sick of it. No loose items at all made it. A very sort of, like, predictable, here's your Final Fantasy Randomizer, here's your instructions. And, um... Some loose items, the early ship, the free canal. This is a... It is a more challenging introduction to FFR than last year's Swiss Flags were. It's grown up a little bit. Um, it, it asks a bit more of the people coming in fresh. So I, I feel a little bit for any first-time players starting with this tournament. It's going to be harder. There's more to learn. But it has yielded, so far, one heck of a race. Moist Mogwai runs into some mana cores. Shadow Walker getting slowed down by some sharks. Usually high HP. It's a race to light the fourth orb. Oh! What? Go. Can't oh, hold. Was that, was that the Mazmone? Can't hold. That's the Mazmone. Game on. The, the tides have just turned. Shadow Walker 227 has picked up the highest damage output weapon equipped by any light warrior in the game. It is the Mazmoon. I did, does did, does Shadow Walker have the lead now? I I don't know. Did anybody else lose? Yeah, I lost Mo. Yeah, we lost Mo. We've lost Gorgeous George. But where'd you lose him? Okay, Lord Fizzlebee. Exactly we have word sick. from our restreamer, Lord Fizzlebee. He's trying to get her back. I've lost everything. Nets. Everything's down for me. Ah, uh, I'm not dead yet. I can still watch Shadow. Mo's back. Mo's back. I'm going to refresh, which is always dangerous, but just to try and get something up to date for myself. It's been such a great match. I've got Shadow Walker. I've got Mo. Okay. I don't know what our restreamer, Lord Fizzlebeef, has. I can see him working furiously behind the scenes. We know that Shadow Walker is about to light his fourth orb. We can tell you that. And when Mo finishes Moist. healing, I'm going to assume that, yeah, she steps yeah. away from lighting her fourth orb, so... Moist Mogwai's about to light her fourth orb. No stone on turn. She's going to stick the stocking horse up front and put the knight in the back. And this is the kind of thing you do when you are absolutely taking no chances. Against Tiamat 1, you're going to waste more time picking spells than killing them. So I would just get this done. Okay, um... In chat, Maya, you talked about a level count. I think we're pretty even. Nitz, do you know? I Yeah, they're they're close. I was going even. off the, the Fighter Knight HP. They're really close. Shadow Walker 227. We're going to call it two hours in one minute. Is the first player to light four orbs with the Mystic Key and the Loot in Hand. Just behind him, his one-on-one -on -one opponent, Moist Mogwai, is about to light her fourth orb with the loot and the mystic key in hand. We're going to call it uh, two hours and not even two minutes. Got some excellent rolls on the nuke there for Mogwai. A high 300 and then a 394 after that. Takes down Tiamat. Four orbs lit. We've got two runners, two hours in, two people heading to Temple of Fiends Revisited. Shadowwalker227 is on his horse. 
and he's riding as fast as he can. He's in the Temple of Fiends Revisited. We'll call two hours, one minute. Mo's got to stop and buy some heals first, but otherwise I think she's ready to rock too. We estimate Moist Mogwai will enter the Temple of Fiends Revisited, go 2,000 years in the past, right around two hours and three minutes. Shadow Walker has turned around a deficit of probably greater than 20 minutes against his opponent, Moist Mogwai, who now trails by what we estimate is about two minutes. The difference in gear isn't much. Shadow Walker has an extra ribbon. Well, it's, it's a little bit more than much, excuse me. Shadowaka has an extra ribbon and the coveted Mazmoon. Probably the favorite sword of most randomizer players, but most Mogwai doesn't care about that because she's got her Vorpal. Lord Fizzlebeef is talking about something. You see it, Nitz? It's on the tracker right there. Moist Mogwai. Yeah. He's got the defense sword. That's huge. I didn't catch about Ruse, I think both players have it for the night. And at 2.03, let's call it 24, Moist Mogwai is in the Temple of Fiends Revisited. One I white believe, is I believe actually them. both players have the white shirt. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was in the armory. I know Moist Mogwai checked it. We'll, we'll double-check that. Yeah, neither one has... Um, impressive levels so either one could run into any kind of sticky trouble here moist mogwai is now being accosted by frost giants and frost wolves moist mogwai right now is about two floors behind shadow walker 227 who is on the earth floor two maybe three floors he's actually closed the gap a little bit we had it at about two minutes it's probably down to about 90 seconds yeah, and I think with uh, with Moist Mogwai being promoted, she's got some better armor significantly, too. I know she picked up things like the Age of Shield and other stuff that she's hopefully rocking at this stage. Yeah. Age of Shield and Dragon Armor. Dragon Armor, I believe, was in the um, Armory as well, I think. Lastoid's yeah. pointing something out right now that Shadow Walker is using Ice 2 charges that share a level with Fast. Yeah, and he's got a red. It doesn't down. stack, so you only need a right. handful of charges. Even right to the end, you just need like three for the last three bosses. So, um, and and ice two against the Medusas is a is an interesting choice as well. That's the spell you want for them. Fire three. It's good enough Shadow for Lich. Walker starting to pull ahead. He's about to take out Lich too, and move on to the fire floor. Meanwhile, Moist Mogwai is in a little bit of a holding pattern, closing in on the Phantom, and where she has to use the loot tile. Shadowbuck closing in on Carry 2. He's overcome a lead like I've never seen before in Final Fantasy Randomizer. But he's in the Temple of Fiends Revisited. This is no cakewalk, 220%. Kraken 2 is coming up, Nitz. This is... You you don't want... You don't walk into Final Fantasy Randomizer. This isn't like other games. Where, uh, you uh, go out and do this, and it's just almost guaranteed if you get there first. That doesn't happen here. No. Mogwai hits the, uh, long hero run at the start and end of the encounter table, which is followed by the sequence of hot tiles, so she's got a few things to run away from, but blew through the previous two floors without a shot fired. Carry two? Not much of a threat. Who? Yeah. Carry who? Carry two is, is often just a uh, sort of an appetizer, like an aperitif, you know? Starts nice and sweet, but then it just bitters right up on the palate. It really gets you prepared for cracking two. We believe that both players are on a different step counter. Uh, we're hearing from Purity the Cat in chat. Great to see you, by the way that at least Mo power cycled. She had closed the gap of those two minutes, but right now it seems to have more of extended to about two and a half minutes. Shadow Walker has taken over. And it's Kraken 2. Shadow Walker is going to try to take out Kraken, but Kraken does not... It doesn't look like he hits that hard, Nitz. 
Oh, I, think, oh. I think Shadow Walker's gonna get him. Hit hard, hit schmard. Kraken 2 just, like, <laughs> just steps aside, like, Dataluma in the Zozo Tower. I really hate fighting, so I better let you pass. <laughs> Moist Mogwai's on the fire floor. She's closed the gap. She's one floor behind at this point. As Shadow Walker continues to heal, he's through the biggest roadblock that we think is Kraken 2. Remaining is Tiamat 2 and the Echo of the Floating Castle that Shadow Walker is about to enter. We'll see if he gets any encounters in here as Moist Mogwai tries to make up the difference. She's not going to be able to make up much on Kraken 2 or Carry 2 before that because they were so paper thin. But, uh... The real show is these last two bosses, Team Mat 2, coming up. Shadow Walker is the first of Team Mat 2. Just behind him is his opponent, Moist Mogwai. Shadow Walker has decided to leave his fighter in the top slot. He's going to try to protect the White Mage. He is not class promoted, but he knows the White Mage must survive this bout with Team Mat 2. He's playing no very prisoners. well. Just... Nuke after nuke after nuke. He's not going to save him for uh, Chaos. He's going to defeat Chaos with melee by the look of it. His Mazmoon is not doing much. Two hits for 84 damage isn't going to do it. But I don't think it matters, Nitz. Tiamat 2 is terminated. Not much left between Shadow Walker and Chaos. Not many nuke charges left. Not a lot of levels on this fighter. Is that pumped up Mazmoon at level... 21 or so, gonna be enough. I'm I'm nervous of him, Shadow Walker Nitz. I'm nervous. You're you're hedging all your bets on the Mazmoon. It's a it's a pretty good bet. It is. It's it's a fine bet. People have made yeah. much worse bets, but uh, so many of those nuke charges just got consumed on Tiamat 2 that maybe you wanted for that boss with almost double the HP in vanilla. Moist Mogwai tries process. to close the gap. She's one floor behind. Shadow Walker took some damage against the vampires. If Shadow Walker gets to Shadow Walker has another encounter in the Echo of the Floating Castle and its vampires, and they hit. Yeah, and they the hit hard. Getting burnt up. He also fired off a nuke charge from his red mage. Oh, he runs away before he uses it, so. That could prove um, significant if that nuke comes into play here against Chaos. I've got to think that Shadow Walker has relaxed at this point in time. He extends his lead just a little bit more. It's back and forth and back and forth. Right now it's the time for the bite with the ultimate fiend, Chaos. Shadow Walker Ooh. rearrange. He's going to rearrange his party a little bit. He's unpromoted and he's relying on the Mazmoon. Can the Mazmoon win this bout? Mama Duck the Challenger. Shirt. Gonna throw that fast. No, no fast on the fighter. Gonna use up the nuke, so that's a low roll. 116 is near the bottom end there. White shirt, get that evasion up. We'll see. Chaos hasn't attacked yet. Yeah, Shadow Walker's using the fighter to use the white shirt. He's gonna attack with nuke, but Chaos is gonna resist a lot of those. He's gonna resist that nuke for 111. Yeah. That's another pretty low roll. Even if Chaos resists you, you get an average of about 150, because it's 100 to 200 if you if you miss. So 116 and 1, like 12, those are pretty bad. Shadow Walker's gonna adjust. <laughs> He's gonna try to be Will Cleosis as best he can. He's gonna fire Bane, but it's ineffective. Chaos can't give too much back. It's only an Ice 2. It's uh, Slim gonna... Pickens. Oh boy. Nets. That Mazmoon isn't doing it. It's two hits and only double-digit damage. This just became very interesting. Moist Mogwai is one floor behind Shadow Walker now. Shadow Throwing Walker's starting to throw out Hail Marys. He's going to try Rub. Chaos it's so far hasn't showed, out, showed anything powerful, but if he's got enough HP to tank these last attacks, his physical damage is going to overpower that healing magic eventually. We have not seen Slow 2 on Nuclear. We haven't seen anything like that. Chaos is going to attack physically more than likely into Shadow Walker, and he does. Only two hits from the Mazmoon for a hundred damage. This fight is starting to drag on. He's starting. He's going to try to chip against Chaos. Ice 2 and the Thor Hammer. He's got to be getting there, but at the same time, what does Chaos have up his sleeve? 
Oh, he paralyzed. Chaos is gonna fire stop, and he paralyzed the fighter. Do we have any cure four? Cure four would cure that. Meanwhile, Moist Mogwai is creeping up behind Shadow Walker. Chaos is gonna try to fire an instant kill spell. It's gonna be zap, and it misses. The ribbons work. Meanwhile, Moist Mogwai side. She's in trouble. No. Moist Mogwai has reset. No. This is Shadow Walker's game to win. Yeah. She didn't just reset, she was defeated by Tiamat 2. The whole party... One after the other. Shadow Walker's gonna try to fire Bane into Chaos to try to win this. It's not gonna- it's not gonna work. He's trying to chip- his fighter is still paralyzed. He's gonna yeah. try to chip and he's gonna try to fight Chaos. Oh, Chaos is starting to attack! When your Light Warrior is paralyzed, you lose all your evasion. All those evasion stacks are not gonna help you, he's got to move to the Cure 4. I don't think he has Cure 4. I don't think he went and bought it. Just throwing out rub after rub after rub. So Lightning 2, he's trying to cure. He's trying to keep that fighter alive. He's probably <laughs> going to get the Cure 3 off. He does. There's another Cure 3. Well played by Shadow Walker. He's going to fire into their Hail Mary. It's rub, but that's oh, okay. No! Oh my god! Chaos! Cure 4! Just casted Cure 4! After like 700 years of war, Chaos cranks out a cure four. It's heartbreaking. You can forget about this. I know there was hammer. Shadow Walker's fighter is back up. He's wielding the Maz Moon. Not for long. It's Not immediately for long. Again. Chaos fires a stop into Shadow Walker and it hits his fighter. <laughs> you can't write a script like this. This fight is going on forever. Meanwhile, Moist Mogwai is trying to creep back into this. She's on the Earth floor. Shadow Walker's doing all the adjusting that he possibly can. He's gonna try to keep attacking with the Mazmoon. That's his really, that's it. That's all he can do. Oh man, 2,000 years in the past to fight this chaos, and by the time the battle's over, they're gonna make it back to the present. I don't think he put the ribbon, I, th I think he left the ribbon on Bill. He didn't put it on the fighter. He's trying to heal. His, his HP is good. We haven't seen any skills. We haven't seen Swirl or anything. Chaos can't hit Shadow Walker at all. We know he doesn't have a whole lot of spells, though. He's. I think he's got... Well, maybe he does have full 8 spells, but he seems prone enough to cast them that if he gets back around to that Cure 4 again, you know that... Oh, that's it? That's it! Never mind, I take it all back. A Thor Hammer, 47 damage. And it's Congratulations. over. Congratulations! GG's and congratulations to our winner. Shadow Walker 227 finishes in first place with an official SRL time. Two hours, 14 minutes, 44. <sighs> Just when we thought it couldn't end. After one of the most ludicrous chaos battles I've ever seen, where it seemed like neither party could hardly scratch the other. A Thor hammer. Chips. A Thor hammer, yeah. You know, I, Nitz, I, if this happens, and I play, I'm gassed. I, I'm on fumes, I'm gassed. He earned it. Incredible, incredible comeback that Shadow Walker 227 made right here on the opening night of the 2019 Spring Tournament. Speaking of joining us in the booth so quickly after such a thrilling cover behind victory is the man, the myth, the legend himself, Shadow Walker 227 GG. Congratulations. I don't know how I killed that chaos. <laughs> no one is quite sure, but no there's one a knows. hammer and uh, pure willpower. God doesn't know. Oh my goodness. I had a Thor hammer, I had a Mazmune, and that was it. I, I literally had nothing else. I threw all the banes and rubs I had at it. <laughs> 3 and 256 was not with me. How about that Cure 4? Was that a little bit demoralizing? Oh god, I thought I was done. <laughs> I thought I was done, like, an hour and a half ago, to be so fair. Yeah, uh, you, uh, many counted you out after it took so long for you to turn in the herb. <laughs> Uh, at what point did you see it and finally go, oh, how did I forget that? After I had done everything else. Were you just not thinking about looking in your inventory, or was it just like, just flipped your mind as soon as you grabbed it? Uh, 
I don't remember where I picked up the herb. I will be totally honest, although that okay. was, you know, two hours ago at this point. Yeah, it was, uh, the king and princess had the herb and the crown, so they both gave me quest oh, items right off the bat. Um, yeah. but I did everything in the, uh, <laughs> the inner sea, and I, I didn't get much, and then I remembered, oh yeah, I have the herb, when I finally looked at my inventory and said, where can I go? Uh, so I had the herb, and you know, I got the ship, and I started sailing around, and this seed was painful. <laughs> it, it was not easy. No, it was something. Um, Mago, I had a lead for quite a while because she had done that right off the bat. But um, she's just sort of like was patiently taking things down, but she was checking a lot more chests because coincidentally, because of what you did on the inner sea, you found the Mystic Key pretty early, and then you went to Temple of Fiends and you found the Chime fairly early. And then I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, because you ended up getting the ruby from Ordeals, you decided to go do the, the ruby stuff, but then while you were there, you decided to clean out Earth Cave. Because maybe if you're chasing, Earth Cave is kind of an unusual place to check. Was that kind of the plan? Yeah, I mean, I had seen the loose items fairly early, so I knew I didn't really need to, to do a deep dive. I knew I just needed to hit up the incentive locations at that point. Um, yeah, once, once you found the floater in Earth, you mean. Yeah, it, it yeah. was really just a matter, once I found that floater, of figuring out where those incentive locations uh, were. Um, so it, it was a little bit of a hunt to to track down, like, the slab into the loot, for instance. Um, because at, at that point, I was so flustered, I had forgotten where previous towns were. Uh... But I managed to pull it together, and somehow I managed a really low-level Tober Dive. I'm still not fully sure how. Shadow Walker. It's Will. Yeah. I'm gonna ask you I'm gonna ask you a question that I know the answer to, but I have to ask it. Do you know how fortunate you are to move to 1-0 in the 2019 Spring Tournament? Oh, I... I thought I was done forever ago. Um... If... if literally everything after the Inner Sea hadn't gone my way, there was no way I went to 1-0. Uh... Mo should have beat me. I, I played that seed terribly. I played myself. Uh... And I, I forgot to do incentive turn-ins. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, both of you definitely had some like opening tournament jitters. She cleared out the entire um, ordeals, for example, and then neglected to save and wiped like three steps away from it. And had to do the whole thing again like later. So there was like there was some mistakes on both sides to be sure. But you did a really good job of not giving up on yourself even after it took you like an hour to remember about the herb, something like that. But like that's something that can really defeat someone and they just give up. But you didn't give up. You actually pushed really hard. And the second half of your run, once like you had the wind beneath your wings, you were flying. Oh, I mean, once I got out of the inner sea, and once I saw that floater in Earth, there was really no choice but to put the pedal to the metal and just go as fast as I possibly could ignoring absolutely everything, which is why I did a Tover Dive at, like, level 19. Yeah. <laughs> which was not comfortable. Just No, that was... The Massimoon find changed your fortunes completely. That was so, uh, like, convenient that it was just right there in the Sharknado room. Oh, yeah. If that hadn't been just in the most convenient of places, I don't know how I would have gotten through that scene. Yeah, that was... was where I was coming from, uh, Shadow Walker, if you don't find that Mazmoon, are you going with the Sun Sword, knowing... Are you going with the Sun Sword? I would have. I, I absolutely would have. I was pot committed to just go and pray at that point. <laughs> it, I, I didn't feel like I had another option. I felt like, literally, I am so far behind, the only thing I can possibly do is go and pray. So, 
That's what I did, and I conveniently found the Mazmune, and if it weren't for that, I still think I would have wiped in Tober, because that chaos, with the Cure 4 and being as beefy as it was, was not free. We're gonna move away, we're gonna move back to the action right now. Moist Mogwai has made it to the floor of the Ultimate Fiend Chaos. <laughs> She's gonna do a victory lap, a la... Now that's like, that's like... FF. When coach says you gotta run past the tree out past the bike shacks because, you know, somebody was late to practice or whatever. That's just a, a lap of penance. <laughs> Moist Magre played a great game. I, I would say bordering on incredible. And she begins to take on the ultimate fiend of chaos. A great match between two good friends. Two people that really get along. Two people that probably don't care if they lose to each other. Moist Mogwai will be the loser tonight. She does know that Shadow Walker has defeated her, and she doesn't care. She's going to take on the Ultimate Fiend Chaos. We know that he has Cure 4. We know it's a little bit deeper in the spell pool, but she's going to attack. She's able to get a fast off, Nitz. That's pretty good. She's going to wield the Vorpal Sword. She did not find the Mazmoon. She was in go mode, and she flew right past it. Chaos, yeah. we know, is spell happy, too. He's spell happy with a bunch of mediocre spells, but he's got a cure four at the end of there. So, uh, trying to get him killed before that would be most beneficial. Great move from Moist Mogwai. She wants to use that heal three and keep her HP up. We saw her opponent, our winner tonight, Shadow Walker, use Rob and Bane and throw everything he possibly could at Chaos, and it doesn't matter. But Chaos has the stop, and that's what caused Shadow Walker all the problems. She does not have the ribbon. On the night, she is class promoted, just like Shadow Walker didn't, who just wasn't class promoted. Oh, does she have any charges of Cure 4? Because again, it doesn't does. happen often, but this is one of those situations where a Cure 4 can save the day. Cure 4 shares a level with life, it's level 2. Moist Mogwai has lost. Moist Mogwai is, has lost her two mages, she's lost her black wizard. And her red wizard. It's down to Meridian, her white wizard, who is struggling. Her white wizard is down to 8 HP. And her yeah. knight named Will. Boys Bogwai with the big strike. Boys Bogwai takes it home. Yes, Congratulations. The, the clutch cure for to recover the paralysis. What cure for? Is there anything it can't cure? And don't say death or stone. It's got your back for everything else. 2 hours, 24 minutes, 40 seconds from Mama Duck herself. And, uh, Nitz. Very impressive from Moist Mogwai. I, um... Uh, that Gave was it a ride. well played from Moist Mogwai. Wow. Gave it a ride. If she was in go mode slightly sooner, if she had come across the uh, chime slightly sooner and not wiped to Team at 2 the first time, um, could have taken this one. In the end, it goes in the books as one heck of a comeback and just uh, a well-played race on both sides with 10 minutes between two runners over two and a half hours. So what, what more can you say? If yeah, this what a way to kick the, off. If this is the kind of race that's going to be you know, indicative of the tournament ahead of us, uh, that's a tournament that I look forward to watching very closely. Yeah, the crowd has grown the, really the entire night. Uh, great players, players of, of the tournament – players coming in saying what what in the world is going on oh well you know there was a floater loose in the earth cave and good luck finding it but the player that did find it and the player that played incredibly well tonight welcome to the broadcast booth moist mogwai oh gg shadow gg mo that was that was a seed and i played it terribly in the beginning I made a, a heck of a lot of gambles that felt good at one point, but man, did that Tiamat 2 just absolutely wreck all of my self-confidence. So, I, I gotta ask you, what, what time, time did you go out of the inner sea? Uh, whew, very early on. Um, 10, 40 minutes, I was already out. Would you believe me if I said it took me more than an hour to get out of the inner sea? Because I forgot to turn in the herb? No. Oh, that feels bad. 
I would believe you, just because I challenged you on a night I shouldn't have. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> that must have been <laughs> I, painful. No, no. Did I what? Did you go to Marsh? I did go to Marsh. I went absolutely everywhere in the inner sea before I turned in that herb. Oh. <laughs> I absolutely everywhere. <laughs> The flip side is that you found the chime early enough, so you were actually in go mode sooner. And that kind of helped with your comeback effort, because Mo had to do more chest checking until she found the chime in the Temple of Fiends, which she got around to made after... a lot of weird gambles. Yeah. Actually, they, those worked out really well. Your Earth Gamble, I mean, had, you, you had the floater like a half an hour or more before him, but you had so many chests to check because you didn't have the chime yet, and yeah. that kind of, that gave him time to catch up because of that. So though those open, loose items uh, turned out to be pretty significant, all told. It, it was a rough seed. That, that was by no means a free seed, and I got incredibly lucky. Uh, Mo, don't feel like you played that bad. I feel like I shouldn't have been able to win that. I dove Tover at, like, level 19. It was... I felt like I was so far behind, I didn't have any other option. I I think I was level 19 when I went in as well, um, but I was class change and had some gear. So I didn't feel bad until Tiamat decided to nuke me. Uh, I felt like I was so far behind, I even didn't class change. That's how far behind I felt like I was. You know, we, we kind of talked about it in the pregame and a little bit throughout the match about uh, year two's friendship. You both get along <laughs> and all the work that you, you both do behind the scenes. And uh, Nitz, I, I think I can speak for you on this. We had a lot of fun doing this. And this is how you kick off the 2019 Spring Tournament. The main event is what I call it. And uh, congratulations to you, Shadow Walker, and a big congratulations to you, Moist Mogwai. Oh, very, very well played, Mo. You, uh, you really showed showed me a whole ton tonight. And uh, I don't, I don't want to play you. <laughs> I don't want to go near you. Uh, congratulations, well done. Uh, I think the difference in the match. Uh, was Shadow Walker was, I'm done, I'm done checking chests. I'll get a couple along the way. He walked into that, that Mazmoon weapon. And it, while it wasn't the most effective, without that, he would have had the Sun Sword. And I think that might have made the difference in the match. Because uh, I, don't, I don't think the Sun Sword would have been able to get it done. Whereas your Vorpal obviously clearly did. It did um it did pretty well for me in there. Um and if I'm not mistaken, my very first race I ever did in SRL restreamed, you and Nitz were commentating. And when I went back and listened to that, Nitz yelling at me to save, yelling at me to reset, just yelling at me to use my token exit. Uh hopefully I made you cringe less this this go around. Oh don't there worry, was Shadow Walker. Time. Shadow Walker didn't use his exit either, don't worry. Oh, no. Oh, man. <laughs> Shadow Walker liked to walk. <laughs> Did I even have exit? Yep. I, oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. my goodness. You really lived up to your name there, uh, Shadow yeah, Walker, because you, you walked everywhere. You're going to be oh, sore tomorrow man. morning, brother. You walked out of ice. You walked out of the friggin' waterfall. You were just walking. You uh, walked yes, out of the waterfall? I'm walking. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> man, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be totally honest. I was not in the right mental state for this. Uh, the the fact fun. that I the fact that I was able to catch up, let alone win, yeah, baffles you were, me. You were playing with subconscious mind once you were in go mode. It was just like the fingertips were like pressing the buttons, but like there was nothing going on upstairs, you know. <laughs> oh man, that was that was such a comeback. We were on pins and needles. You guys were entered into a Temple of Fiends or visited within like a minute and a half of each other. Uh, and Mogwai was like a floor behind you. If you had wiped instead of her, different ending. It's it was that close, oh, and um, yeah, what what an amazing race. Um, but probably about time we wrap this one up. So uh, let's count it down. Um, Moist Mogwai, any final thoughts for your opening match tonight? Um, you know, get it out of the way early. Here we are, zero and one. Gonna go strong into the next week. Uh, I appreciate everybody on this crew very last minute. I know um, this was not planned at all, so thank you, Lord Fizzlebee, for <laughs> restreaming. 
Nitz and Will for commentating, and I think Lyra was on tracking, so thank you all very much. Um, and then, of course, my opponent, Shadow. GG, man. Um, Shadow Walker. Uh, GG, Mo. Um, <laughs> the only thing I can say is if, if you're going to do a tournament race, if you're going to do any race, be in a proper mental state. <laughs> I, I was not. I was not prepared. I feel like I lucked into this. Uh, GG Mo, I am sure you played this much better than I did. Um, <laughs> GG. I, I yeah. feel like luck was on my side, and that was it. And uh, Will, you opened it up, so I'll shut it down. What are your final thoughts, Will? Thank you to Zar stepping in. Zar and Lyra. Anyone who's here from the beginning or anyone that watches the restream will see that we put this together <laughs> an hour and a half after the reveal. These two friends wanted to play. Oh, and Lyra, you came out and said, how, do you need help? How, how can I help you? What do I need to do? Zar was walking into the door. What are we doing? Nitz, you know, we got the call and I'll never turn down an opportunity to work with you. And Lord Fizzlebeef is really the catalyst to make that happen. And this is a testament to Final Fantasy Randomizer. This is what we do. These are two great players and two incredible people backed up by an incredible crew. And it's just, it's such an honor. And I thank everyone for what it is that we do. And by the way, this match was on day zero. So we got a lot more coming. Final Fantasy Randomizer 2019 Spring Tournament. Take us home, Nets. Sardia on the track and shoveling coal into the hype train. There is links to all the runners in chat and myself. Nitz underscore underscore score so nice. Scored it twice. The wordsmith, Will Cleosis, Shadowwalker227. He doesn't just play this tournament. He doesn't just run another tournament. He's in the other tournament. The guy's all over FFR, and if you're not following him, maybe you should be, especially like at FFR. Moist Mogwai has taught more people to play this game than anyone. I think uh, that's just undisputed put on a great show tonight and Lord Fizzlebeef Productions behind the scenes making this restream happen to kick off what should be an excellent tournament for everyone behind me talking to everybody in front of me thanks for coming out tonight good night we'll see you next time Woo! Team Warble Warble